looks like that's working. Have we got picture now? Yes, I think we do. Sound, camera, action. I think it's working. I can't tell. It doesn't. Why isn't it showing on? Why isn't it showing on there? Was there anybody there? position it like that so I can see the little dot. Steph's here. Hi Steph. Okay, somebody's here. Excellent. So does that mean everything's working? Oops, don't do that. No, don't do that either. Hold please. No, don't don't do that. Why why are you doing that? Don't do that, please. There we go. That's better. Volume's a bit low. Okay. Um I don't know why I'm looking over there. Is that better? The camera's a little bit for the the mic is a little bit further away than it normally is. Hi Becky, Fiona, Mika, Steph, hello. Is that better now? Sorry about the temporary jiggling. My leg is feeling a bit funny. I'm just getting some circulation going in it. Is it better now? Can you hear me, mother? Hi, Lisa. Oh, guys. Guys. Lisa has lost her little baby Poppy today. Her little fur kid. Poppy's gone to Rainbow Bridge. She went peacefully in her sleep with mummy cuddles. So. Maybe give her a little thought. It's weird knowing Poppy's not sat there listening to me. She sits and listens to me. I'm sorry, Lisa. They're not with us long enough. Forever isn't long enough. So if you're if you're the kind of person who lights a candle for them or whatever. Please do. Think a little poppy. Little sweetie. <sighs> Have you noticed we've got daylight today? Look at the daylight. No no lights on whatsoever. Um I finally got sitting sick of being a mushroom sitting in the dark in the corner and uh, I moved my desk. Uh, about six feet from over there to over here which was a game and a half which is probably why my knee's hurting I think I did the age-old thing that you're not supposed to do of trying to move something by bending down and pushing my knee against it because it's easier to get down low and oh it takes time. It takes lots of time. You'll have to come and see Maddie for cuddles. Well, yeah, if you don't have kids, they are like your kids, aren't they? Even if you have kids, they're like your kids. Madge, come say hello, baby. Come on over, my sweet. Hello. 
Hi, Snotty. How are you doing? She's been sat out in the garden all day. She's been sat out in the garden on Mummy's chair all day. Haven't you? Hi. I'm going to move that over a little bit. I can't... Um, can't see the whole screen and I keep going like that to see round it. There we go, that's better. Yes, give your puppers and kittos a, an extra cuddle. So, can you believe it's nearly the end of July already? It's mad. Yes, Steph is just... Um, Sorry about the state of my cup. It was clean when I made my coffee. I don't know how I make this mess. Just having a coffee sat here for half an hour, but I do. Um, Steph has a new puppy called Lara. She's very cute. Very cute. That coffee doesn't taste very nice, but hey. So, um, news and updates. What do we have to update you? Uh, vlogging has resumed. You may have noticed yesterday. Uh, vlogs are going to YouTube a week after they're filmed. Um, I can't film... I'm trying to film a week of footage and then chop it up into sensible chunks. So last week I had like five hours of footage and about 30 minutes of it was usable. So I split it into two. So you had a you had a vlog yesterday. You're going to have another one tomorrow. Um, I personally like long vlogs, but the general consensus seems to be 15 to 20 minutes every few days is better than a long drawn out one. Um, once a week or whatever so and it, it's actually quicker to make a 10 minute vlog than a use all your footage anyway vlogs are resumed I have that reminds me I haven't actually vlogged this week I better I better put my camera there so I remember I've been too busy moving stuff around um what else? Oh, uh, readings are resuming in August. Um, you can currently purchase readings for astrology charts and tarot decks, tarot readings, sorry, over on my website, romanysrealm.org.uk. Link is up there, up there, up, up, up there, 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 that's where it is. It's there. It's there. There we go. Uh, it's also in the description down below. Hi, baby. Um, yeah, I'm I'm good to go with with readings again now. I'm actually fully booked for um, readings for August. So if you want a reading, um, I think the last week of August is the first time that one's available. So if you want one, you need to look quickly. Everyone's coming out of quarantine like, oh my God, I need a reading. What do I do now? <laughs> I think we all feel the same way. Um, so yeah, those are available. Um, Patreon, obviously, you all know about Patreon. Uh, commissions are open for later in the year now. I am a slow painter, so don't ask me for a commission and want it in like three weeks because it's not going to happen. <laughs> I can't paint that fast. Um, but I, you know, I'm, I'm good to go for about anything you want from September onwards. So again, if you're interested in a commission, email Katie, romanysrealm at gmail.com. You also like the long vlogs, but the vlog you put up was really nice. The combination of drawing and Katie's music had a magical feeling. That's kind of what I'm going for. Just like 15 to 20 minutes of something really relaxing rather than 
Because I, I don't have a particularly exciting life, you know. I get up, I do stuff with my dogs, I drink a lot of coffee, I eat pizza and watch scary movies on Friday nights, and the rest of the time I'm either drawing, journaling, filming, or I'm sat here with you guys. <laughs> so there's not a huge amount to do. <laughs> um, one thing I can promise you, because I don't know about you, but... Lately, there has been so many vlogs that are just hours and hours and hours of people packing Etsy orders. I mean, I get it. It's it's part of people's jobs. And I, I totally understand that they're going to include that kind of footage. But lately, it's just been like, here's my studio vlog. And it's like two minutes of them talking and then two hours of them packing Etsy orders. And I'm like, this is... What? <laughs> Did I miss something? Well, I don't have an Etsy shop, so <laughs> I am I am not the kind of reliable person to have an Etsy shop or anything like that. I will eventually be doing the occasional occasional pre-order for prints and stuff like that, and you may see something like that crop up once in a while, but it won't be all the time. Because I, I, I don't, I can't do that all the time. I paint and I draw and I teach and I write because I can't do all that physical stuff all the time. Just, just can't. Anyway, uh, anything else? Super Chat is still available on YouTube. So if you don't, if you are not a patron or if you don't like to sign up for regular subscriptions or anything like that, but you would like to support the channel, you can do it through super chat when we're live i only do lives once a week wednesday afternoons and we're here for as long as it takes mm -hmm. twitch is back on fridays and i'm there for as long as i feel like it friday last week i was there for six hours so <laughs> if you want to go and watch a really long twitch stream of me painting that's available <laughs> <laughs> and if you would like the same with no adverts then become a patron because that's where you'll get that uh, I reserve the right to put adverts on everything else but Patreon no ads ever for anything except like if I'm doing a class or something and I'll go hey I'm doing a class you can find it over there there you go so one book July How's One Book July going, guys? How is it going? I apologise, by the way, for the state of me. I have been sat in the garden getting bitten. <laughs> and I have I have an autoimmune condition and my they just don't heal. Bites do not heal on me. I've had this one for about three months now. And it still just doesn't heal. It won't go away. Anyway, um, yeah, One Book July. Is anybody doing One Book July this year? It's been awfully quiet. Awfully quiet. I've been trying to follow along with uh, Carrie's read-along and I just can't take it in. I, get, I understand the premise, but I just can't follow where it's going. Maybe I need to wait until she's finished the book and watch all her videos in one go and then it'll make sense but uh I don't know maybe I just don't have the brain I've discovered that my my muscles have atrophied over the last three months <laughs> I'm a jellyfish I need to take up Pilates again because my whole core is like wibbly wobbly I moved two desks a computer which admittedly my Mac weighs a ton if you've ever picked up a 21 inch Mac you know how heavy they are. Um, two chairs and a chest of drawers. Well, not like an office chest of drawers. Yeah. And my old, old desk, my antique drop down desk yesterday over the course of about four hours. And I was knackered at the end of it. Oh my God. I was like, <laughs> Felt like I'd done cardio. <laughs> it shouldn't be this hard. It's just moving furniture. Oh my god. 
and my knees, my knees from the standing up and bending down, standing up and bending, and my back was like, oh my God, I gotta sit down for a minute. <laughs> so yeah, Pilates everybody, online Pilates classes. If you're doing any, please send me the link because my core, <laughs> my core, wibbly wobbly. <laughs> Uh, I've always taken very, I've ta always taken pride in the fact that even though I am big, I am reasonably fit. I mean, I couldn't run a marathon or anything, but, you know, I have a thyroid condition and a few other things going on. I can't, I, c I, I couldn't run a, a marathon if I was a size 10. Um, but I'm reasonably fit. I can walk on the flat pretty much indefinitely just drop me somewhere and send me home uh i i don't generally have an issue with getting massively out of breath or anything uh and this week i'm like whoa mama <laughs> you've got to get out and do some exercise holy heck oh are you moving lisa where are you moving to you didn't tell me you were moving Are you moving away or are you just moving local? You must text me and explain. Explain yourself, woman. You did not tell me this. <sighs> One book July is going slow, but that was to be expected. Yes, I think that's that's pretty much everybody's expectations when they went into One Book July. It was like, well, it's it's just nice to do something normal, but let's not expect too much. <laughs> You have a to-do list and a journal, so you're not actually doing One Book July. Well, I have a to-do list, a journal, a collage book, uh, well, kind of junk journal, collage thing, and a and a sketchbook. So I'm not technically doing One Book July, but it's one book. It's all together. Oh, look, you can see the colours on this. Oh, now it's in daylight. You can see the colours. Look how pretty it is. That is fairly representative of the actual colours. Look how beautiful it is. See, I told you it was pretty. Oops. Look how pretty. That blue, isn't it gorgeous? I can't even describe it. It's so, it's such an unusual colour. I've never seen a blue like this. To, to say like, oh, it's a bit like this or it's a bit like that. This, I mean, you could say this is like wisteria kind of colour. But I've never seen a blue like this. It's beautiful. And despite the fact that it's big and chunky and it's quite heavy, I'm actually getting used to it. It's not that heavy once you've got it. Because the thing is, with this one, and this is what I'm enjoying about it, because I've got some stuff in the pouch here, and it's got pockets where I can put bits and pieces of collage that I want to put in my book or photos that I want to put in my journal. I only have to carry this. So if I'm going out to the garden and I want to just work in my journal or my planner, then I can, I can just take this. If I want to go out and take, maybe do some painting or sketching, all I need to add is that. That's it. got my my little watercolour tin and that and it's it's so easy I like it I mean I love the fact that I've got my Delphonics and I can take my Delphonics with me obviously if I my my DIY Delphonics what I made clever heart it needs to clear out look at all this crap I've got in the back I keep shoving stuff in the pockets um yeah I've got that I can take with me if I want to uh, but generally, I tend to use that in the house. So if I'm going to go and sit in my room or if I'm going to go and sit over there with Maddie or if I'm just going to sit at a different desk, that's what I take with me. But if I'm going outside and, you know, by the time you've got this and a coffee cup, you don't want to carry anything else. Yeah. I think without the little pouch, obviously it would be lighter without the pouch, but without the pouch, it wouldn't be as useful, so it would feel heavier because you'd have to carry loads of stuff with you. I would have to take my pouch with me everywhere. But because I've got everything I need and I've settled pretty much on what I'm carrying with me, 
and it hasn't changed an awful lot actually it's changed slightly so I've got my eraser obviously that's still in there I've got my whiteout tape which I own I don't really use whiteout tape all the time I use it if my um, if my bullet journal has like a complete row of crap that I need to get rid of visually it's more for visual distractions than correcting errors um, I've got my little tiny glue stick which is fabulous for just bits and pieces of stamps and washi tape and things like that I've got my highlighter my mild liner I, this is the color I'm using for July I used green for June I'm going to change it to another colour next month. It just makes it easy to visually see straight away what month is which. It's a really useful thing to do. I added a pair of scissors because along with my glue stick, I figured I might as well have a pair of scissors just for cutting out. Because usually if it's bits and pieces, like something like this, I will fussy cut around the outside because it's only a little piece. So it's handy to have just a, <coughs> a small pair of scissors my highlighter, uh, I've got my Tombow pen. Now, I was listening to Abby C the other day and she pronounced this correctly. I keep saying Fudnozuke and that's what everybody I've heard says. That's not how she pronounced it. She pronounced it Fudnozke. Fudnozke. That's right, Fudnozke. She missed out a syllable in the middle that we put in. Hey Katie! Yeah. So I recommend going and listening to somebody who actually can pronounce Japanese words say that because it's not what we keep calling it. <laughs> uh, and then I've got, obviously I've still got my blue Pilot Colorino but I also have now these I ordered like, I don't know, last year, I think. <laughs> Feels like it anyway. I, I think it was maybe March when China first closed all their borders for postage and stuff. Yeah, they finally arrived a couple of weeks ago. Um, so I added those in. Um, the red is nice. It's kind of a rosy kind of carmine red. I love the blue, the purple is my favourite. I want to get the green and the orange as well. Uh, but I'm waiting because these come with two leads. I waited to purchase these until I needed new leads for my blue one, which is why I've not used my blue one for so long, I was out of leads. So when I ran out of leads for this, I ordered these two and some blue leads. And I will order the other two and some leads for whichever or both of these that I really enjoy. Um, I'm not interested in any of the other colours, so there's no point in getting a full pack. So that's my little pouch. Oh, and sometimes I have these in there as well, but I tend to just shove them in here along with photos, and I've got a little a little um, glassine envelope of just like a couple of stickers and a thing of washi and, you know, just little bits and pieces to decorate a page if I'm just feeling like throwing something on. Um, that's mostly what I use my glue, glue pen for. Uh, and if I need these, I just shove them in there, but I don't normally need them. I've got my washi tapes in here. I swap these out depending on what I'm using at the time. This is the one that stays in. This is the one of Maddie. I've got to get some more of this. It's actually a Shiba. Shibu. Shiba Inu. That's the one. Shibu Inu. Yes. And he's very cute. But it reminds me of Maddie. So. That's how you've been saying it. Cause... Oh yeah, Risha! Risha knows Japanese. Maybe she actually knows how to say it. You'll have to say it for us in class, Risha. So I can get the hang of it. It's one of those words that you need somebody to say it along with you to correct you. So once I know how to say it, I'll be all right. But at the moment I have to keep thinking back and replaying the video and going, how did she say it? <laughs> Shibeno, yes. Looks like Maddie, except for the donut. Maddie's got a German Shepherd tail. 
you got yours last week and you're in love you haven't stopped using them oh your your colorinos yeah which ones did you get the red and the blue Uh, yeah, so I keep all my washi is decanted onto these little cards. Uh, a friend of mine um, used to work for Tesco and they had these cards that went out of date and they had a big box of them and she said, oh, I know somebody who can use those and brought them down for me and went, you'll find a use for these, won't you? And I'm like, oh, yes. <laughs> so all my washi tape ended up on cards. Um... I've got a couple of little bits and pieces in here that I, I honestly I keep forgetting are there so I may not use that pocket so much for anything I might use it for important stuff that I mustn't lose <laughs> and, and then I'll be like oh that's where that went <laughs> I've got a couple of little bits and pieces in here this is basically just off cuts that I've just chucked in here and I've got some photos that I've printed anytime I print a photo or anything like that I just shove it in there sometimes uh, I've got my bullet journal my journal my sketchbook and my junk journal junk journal is handmade the sketchbook oh, sorry these two are moleskin cahiers the little soft cover ones that cover, come in a three pack this is a plane and this is a dot and then this one was the insides of half a moleskin sketchbook hardback. Um, I had taken out a lot of pages to use for a separate um, insert and what was left was just the right size for this so I cut the large uh, sketchbook hard cover off and I covered it with a soft cover um, in fact, I believe I stole the cover off one of these that the paper, somehow the paper had got ruined inside, but the covers were okay. So I, I stole the cover and just put a thing on the spine, just washi taped the spine and ta taped it and then stuck my book inside it with, again, with washi tape and then tape. That's probably what I will do next time because these covers... You can't get these large moleskin sketchbooks in a soft cover. You can only get them in the big sizes. So there's like a square one. But I don't really want to cut two inches off of, a, of one of these and have fewer pages and everything else. I just, I would like a, a large one that has a soft cover. So what I may do is do the same thing again. I may just get a regular large one, chop the cover off and uh, cover it with like sturdy scrapbooking paper. I think that'll work. So here's what we've been up to. Uh, oh, I've just got um, important papers and stuff in the back there that I mustn't lose. Uh, and I, they work in there because I can see them at the top. So whenever I pick this up, I'm like, oh, what's that? Oh, that's that bit of paper I mustn't lose. See, I know where it is. So I've been doing my one book junk journal July. Junk journal July, not one book July. Junk journal July. Uh, this was, I'm just following the prompts. So this was label. This was hello. And it's got my card from Vicky in it. This was, hang on, I need the, I need the list. I need the list to work out which is which. This one was Daily Snippet. This is a photo from the park where I take the kids for a walk. And this little guy is the One Book July doodle that Courtney made for us. She does one every year. It's always in her collage sheets and they're always really cute. This little guy has got them. Hobonichi style tent and he's got his little planner with him he's cute um this one was collage this one is going to be typography but I've missed a couple here I haven't gone back and done them yet sketch of you tea and coffee died and then photo 
layers border I'm also going to do boxes on here but I haven't got around to it yet they're going to be hand drawn uh, frame overlap which is I just haven't done anything on these pages yet but those overlap see like that clever huh uh, negative space this was a picture of well can you tell what it's a picture of Whoa, cutting pages out of a book, Risha. A nice book. Wow, <laughs> that's not like you at all. <laughs> We've got a bit of lag, so I'm just waiting. Anybody want to hazard a guess at what that picture is of? No? I don't know if nobody wants to guess or if it's lag city today. <laughs> it's art materials on a desk. Oh, here we go. Oh, we've got lots of we've got lots of lag. Okay, it's the desk, yes. With everything whited out. It, correct. Painting supplies. Yep. It's a box of crayons. A book stack of books, uh, a pen, a, a pot full of um, paintbrushes, there we go, there's the word, a pot of pens and a little stack of like mixer trays, you know, like these things. And then there's a, there's a box up at the top, um, but I figured if I painted that in you wouldn't be able to see the detail here. So it's not finished yet. I'm going to go around it with a little bit of um, marker just to tighten up the edges because my painting skills in, on this paper with this paint were pretty awful. Um, but that, yes, this prompt was negative space. So I thought that was a good way to use it. This one I don't have anything for I like this picture so I'm just leaving her as she is this isn't part of the book this is part of my this is part of my thing it's not part of the book the book is stitched um, but I really like her I think she's really pretty so I don't really want to do anything to her I chose her as the centerpiece of the book so I'm going to leave her as she is this one is tipping this one is tag and because I don't like tags I thought I would be clever and make a tag out of the page and I just need to put a I can't find my hole punch so I need to put a hole in it and then just put a bit of twine on it or something uh, but it's actually also a pocket at the moment I mean, it might not be by the time I've finished it, but at the moment it's made as a pocket. Um, this one is for an inspiring quote. I, I think that's all the ones I've done so far. I'm about halfway through, which, given that it's the 22nd of July, is actually quite good for me. <laughs> that's quite impressive that I'm halfway through and we're on the 22nd of July, because usually by now I'd be like... Well, I did three days and I just haven't touched it since. Uh, but I'm enjoying carrying this book around. And it's just, hey, Ash, it's um, it's fueled my creativity again. It's got me going again with stuff and starting to do things again because I'm carrying this everywhere with me. Even like if I go into the kitchen to cook some food, I take it with me because I'll stand and jot things down while I'm working oh I've got one other prompt uh secret pocket is number 28 but I had these two pages and I thought it was an excellent opportunity to make a secret pocket clever huh you'd never know it was there um 
So that's how far I've got with that so far. I'm trying to keep it super simple. These are technique based mostly. So week one was back to basics. Uh, week two is level up layouts, which is something a little bit more advanced techniques. Week three is about finding inspiration, which is why it's all quotes and music, uh, films and seasonal and word prompts and things. And then week four is exploration, which is trying out different things. So uh, we've got things like abstract, pattern, transparent, detail, that kind of thing. She's got some really good prompts in there. Meg's done really well with the prompts this time. Um, not that she doesn't always, but these are really good prompts. So this is more of a technique thing that I'm doing. Just something to play at when I've got five minutes and I feel like doing something. Because you know me and my cutting and sticking. I do love to cut and stick. My sketchbook is going pretty well. Um, it's not going to be finished by the end of the month. Well, it may be finished by the end of the month. It depends how much time I get to practice some of the things I want to do. But I've had other things on. But it doesn't really matter. It's not like I'm in a race to get it finished by the end of the month or anything like that. It's one book for July not one book in July. <laughs> I don't feel the need to go, oh, I've got to get this finished in July. Uh, I've got these prompts in here that I wanted to use, but I've actually only done one, which was the creepy ice cream. Uh, but it's handy, I think, to have this. I think if you are the kind of person who occasionally picks up your sketchbook and goes, well, I really want to draw, but I don't know what to draw. What shall I draw? What shall I draw? What shall I draw? Oh, I draw what's in front of you. Oh, I don't want to draw my coffee mug again. You know, if you if you have that kind of thing, then it's a good idea to find a few prompt ideas, stick them in the front of your book or in the back of your book or wherever works for you. And then you've got this list of things that you'd really like to do at some point, but you're not in any rush to do the challenge right now. Um, I mean, this was for the 1st of July to the 12th. This is for July 2020. It's the Hobonichi Challenge. And this is for last year. It really doesn't matter. Just find a prompt list that you really like. Um, if you, you know, you, you wanted to do one um, Inktober, but you were too busy prepping for... Hey, Brenda! You were too busy prepping for um, NaNoWriMo to get into doing any art prompts in November for Inktober, well, go and grab the Inktober prompt list and just use that as, you know, ideas for sketching or art journaling or whatever. I'm sorry about the slightly wobbly camera thing. I, my desk, my camera is not on the same desk, but they must be touching somehow because every time this desk moves, the camera wobbles. I shall have to look into that. There must be something... There's probably something caught under the lip of the desk that's making the two touch or something like that. Yeah, so I just wander through these. Nine times out of ten, what I do is I read all the ideas and I go, yeah, I don't want to do any of that. What I'm actually going to do... <laughs> you know, sometimes having ideas that you don't want to do is enough to give you an idea to tell you what you do want to do. Uh, my Patreon stuff is going very well. I've got all six backgrounds painted. That happened on Twitch on Friday, if you're interested. I have completed the initial sketches and line work for the newts and the frogs. Gosh darn it, I forgot to put the... I promised you all the line work yesterday and I forgot to put it up. Katie. Is Katie still here? Katie or Risha. Risha's still here. Can one of you remind me to put the art the line work up ready for tomorrow I would remember to do it tomorrow anyway but I wanted to get it up early so people could practice gosh darn it <laughs> I had it written down and everything and I forgot to do it because I was moving my studio around again <laughs> uh, I've actually changed some of these I've rearranged what I'm doing we're still doing the newt the bat and the frog and the moth um, but the cat is going to be changed to a rat because we all know I cannot draw cats. And the raven, I'm struggling with the raven. It's very hard not to make the raven just look like a big black pigeon. Um, I need some more practice at sketching ravens, apparently. I can't do them very well. 
so I'm going to change him to a wolf because wolves I can do. Wolves we're good with. Wolves and dogs, not a problem. Cats, eh. <laughs> this is the creepy ice cream from the prompt. Creepy ice cream, here we go. I uh, just wanted to try my hideous, hideously green acrylic, acrylic ink, which I adore. I love this colour. It's called Spring Green, is it? Oh, Vivid Lime Green. Vivid Lime Green by Liquitex. And look how it separates. Look at this. Look how dark it is there. And look how light it is. It's almost white at the bottom. Now look. If you have got dark ink in these, you wouldn't even notice that. It's really only because I got a lighter colour than normal that I've realised just how much they settle. And this one still has stuff in the bottom. I'm going to get some... Oh, I don't know if it would be a good idea with a glass. Yeah, I think they're glass bottles and a glass pipette inside. I was going to say I was going to get some steel non-rusting balls you know like you get in um oh well it works for nail varnish it should be fine um yeah just anti-rust ball bearings and put a couple in just to mix the paint a little bit better well it is a ghost creepy ice cream thing i got a little bit obsessed with by buns ghosts and this happened A bunny. Beautiful watercolours that I'm going to review at some point. Sketch from the Guggenheim, that was for Urban Sketches. Uh, there's my frog, that's the line work. This is the colour swatches I was using for the backgrounds. So um, we went with these two for the purple. This is the blue, this is the red, this is the pink the green and the orange which is still a little garish but it's kind of growing on me so I don't know this is the sketch for the newt he's already line work this one is line work but I need to go back over it digitally I think because it's not very clear and then this one was the one you saw you either saw it on the vlog yesterday or you'll be seeing it on the vlog tomorrow I'm not sure which uh, and I had some of the purple paint left over and I wasn't going to waste it. So painty, painty in the background. I actually really like it like that. I might bring some more of it over this this side. But then her hair is going to be really difficult to, to pick out. So I don't know. Maybe I need to... Maybe I need to just leave it as it is. I don't know. I think that's all that's in here. Oh, no, I've got some more swatches. When in doubt, swatch. Metallics. Ooh. More reviews coming soon. And then that's it. So I'm almost halfway through this sketchbook, which for a month is actually not bad, considering I've got one, two, three, four, five other sketchbooks in various sizes, plus my Urban Sketches sketchbook that I usually take when I go out. I haven't been using it for the online stuff. We're doing line work tomorrow or painting. We're doing painting, that's why you need the line work. I've got to give I've got to give you the printouts. Um, obviously, if you're doing your own line work, you can take it at your own pace. You can do the line work tomorrow if you want to, but it's just inking. We're painting. It's primarily painting. We did the inking at the end of last session. Um, but I was going to show you... Oh, that's why I haven't done the frog yet. I was going to show you how I do the frog. I was going to get him like halfway done and then show you how I do it. Um, for those of you who've got iPads and stuff. And then we'll start painting. This is my journal. Um, not got terribly into this. I mean, I'm less than... I'm about a quarter of the way through, I guess. 
and I've got a lot of pages that have places to write but I haven't written anything on them yet. I don't know why I do that. It seems to be like I store everything up until the end of the month and then I write it all out. It's weird. I know exactly what I'm going to write on each page but I haven't done it. Anybody else work like that? So this is some collage pages. Some of these were already works in progress. This is still a work in progress. This is my angsty journal it out type thing. I'm slow at, all, at art journaling. This I can throw together in five minutes. This has taken me at least three two hour sessions so far <laughs> and counting. Um, lots of pictures of the dogs, of course. Um, Paula sent me a fun package with a cool card in it. Four rules for life. Embrace the unexpected, have a positive attitude, be grateful and don't take it all too seriously. That pretty much sums me up. Hi True North, how are you doing? WJ! West Coast Jean! Um... Another collage page. This is all just collage pages, to be honest. It's just me throwing stuff in. It's almost, it's like junk journaling, but with photos, I guess. It's basically, can you remember the place you found the pattern for the small canvas Rophonics pouch? Oh, the big, the, these, uh, the large one and the small one, they're both by the Grain Creative. Um, I follow her on Instagram, so if you go and check out on Instagram, you'll find the link. Or if you go to the video where I sewed it, I think I actually put the link to her tutorials and to the pattern. No, just to the tutorials, because the pattern is in her videos. So I link to her videos, and if you go to the description of her videos where she shows you how to do it, the PDF is in there. Did that make sense? It made sense in my head. Uh... Lots of pictures of the dogs happening at the moment. This was a note, just a compliment slip I got from Closing the Circle. They're on Instagram as Closing the Circle and Etsy as Closing the Circle. They made some uh, masks in not cute colours. Yay! And a black one, and a grey one, and a lavender grey one, and a dusty rose one. It's really cool. <laughs> and it all came beautifully packaged as well. No, um, oh, I've put them too far away to reach. But yeah, they all came beautifully packaged. Uh, and I wanted to keep her thing, because if I need to get any more, I will, I will get them from the same place. <coughs> Excuse me. Hi, Kate. Oh, Kate, hello. I've been reading that book you sent me. If you don't recognise Kate since she changed her username, that's the what used to be Kate B, the perpetual student. My dad's very interested to read that book after me. Uh, this was a bit of, I guess I was having a day today, this particular day, I don't know. This was a quote, it's actually a piece from Sabrina Ward Harrison's journal books, which I've got two copies of one of them and one of them I tear up because it was battered. And it says, sometimes I forget about the magic. Spirits can help us become better versions of ourselves find your motivation and then I added this which says love so something was something was going through my head there for some reason and then I guess the the motivation left me at that point <laughs> there's nothing to journal about it's just I feel like almost to sit and write about stuff it's forcing yourself to do it. I don't want to sit and write about COVID and all the crazy things that's going on in the world. My journals are about me and my life and my thoughts and my feelings. And I'm not ready to deal with any of that just yet. So I'm not really recording any of it. I'm just 
doing what I do and leaving space for writing bits and pieces you know I've got this is a page all about intentions and moon magic and um that one I'm surprised I haven't done yet actually because that's Rachel's mum door it was her 91st birthday this month is she 92 well 91 or 92 She's up there, though. She's up there. Um, this, obviously, is a BLM page, because... I, I get I get so... Not even angry. I'm just bewildered. It's like... Uh, you might need to refresh, Kate. That happens sometimes. It's not me, it's YouTube. We had the same problem last week. It bewilders me. You know, like... Black people shouldn't be killed by police. And there's genuinely people going, Yeah, but... And I'm like, no... <coughs> no but! There's no but! Stop it! Stop it! You know? Anyway. <sighs> um, I think this is the one you saw last week. I actually wrote on this one, look. Lots of dogs. Little Teddy. Vicky's Teddy. Yeah, it's YouTube. YouTube's having a few issues with syncing at the moment. But they're running on skeleton stuff, so it's not entirely surprising. So, the bit we're all here for, the bullet journal. Should be getting scary. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. You know, I know there's all the, the controversy and blah, 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 and blah, 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 whatever, yeah. But, you know, I'm going to say it. The last time a major country started sending unrecognisable secret surface type army people into places and just taking people off the streets was, oh, I don't know, uh, the words Nazi Germany spring to mind for some reason, like, uh, I don't know, anyway. I like the mums and dads. Have you seen the mums and dads? The wall of mums and the what is it? The the posse of dads is it or something? They've got a they've got names for them. The wall of mums all turned up turned up in yellow and just linked arms and stood between the protesters and the the police. And when they got tear gassed the next day, the dads came out with leaf blowers. <laughs> and they were leaf blowing all the all the tear gas back. <laughs> it's like that is genius and that is what you happen happens when you mess with a community of creative people all these years they've been using tear gas to break up protests and not one person went you know what let's get some leaf blowers <laughs> how about that yes oh anyway <sighs> I'm not I'm not condoning violence okay I don't I don't condone violence. I'm not into the whole let's loot and forage and take advantage of the situation and burn people's livelihoods to the ground. That's not helping anybody, much less your own cause. However, if unjust tactics are being used against you, I think you have the right to stand up for yourself. That's what I reckon. And especially in a place that's so open for guns and... I've got the right to defend myself. Well, if you've got the right to defend yourself, then, you know, go ahead. <laughs> I'm defending myself with a leaf blower. <laughs> I can't think of anything more, I guess, passive aggressive <laughs> than using somebody else's weapon that they're using against you with non-deadly force sending it back to them and going, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, that tickled me. Anyway, 
one butcher lie bullet journal who's still using a bullet journal from last year anybody nobody some people i just threw my coffee over myself again i did that last week apparently if i turn my head that way i can't drink my coffee properly <laughs> must be something to do with the way i hold my cup coffee tastes weird I don't know what's up with it today but my coffee tastes weird sorry I'm just getting the camera lead out of my face you're still in the bullet journal I was in a bullet journal all the way through last year right the way up until January when I got my little book which I don't know where it is right now don't even ask me because I destroyed my studio the last two days uh, but when I got my passport notebook I started using that and I'm still using a bullet journal system the same system but for January February well I guess February March I moved into using a passport notebook and I went through an entire notebook in a month which is both good and bad one I was using it and I was getting plenty of use out of it because I was using it all the time enough to go through an entire passport notebook however it also makes it really difficult when you need to find something that's in a previous book because you've got all these little refills to go through even if you know which book it's in you've still got to go through the stack of them you know so that put me off a little bit um, and then COVID. <laughs> Fast forward to July, <laughs> you know, um, I was still doing stuff in April, May, June. I was still teaching. I was still working. I was still doing all the things I normally do. But I just couldn't handle having a, a even a to do list, having a to do list that I felt like I had to be productive when everybody else around me was just losing their minds was like. I'm just going to treat this like one thing at a time. I'm just going to do one thing at a time. I'm going to go through the motions. And I was literally just using like scraps of paper. I got through a, a lot of those. Um, I've got nothing to show you anywhere. Anything anywhere. Because everything's over there. <laughs> you know those um, to-do lists that you buy that are a pad of to-do lists? I was using different ones of those and just grabbing one when I needed it and just chucking it out when I'd done it because anything else seemed like too much commitment. <laughs> Towards the end of June, I started feeling like, OK, I can get back into this again. I need to get a routine going. I need to get my head back in the game. Running around like a headless chicken is not doing me any good. Let's knuckle down get back into the bullet journal get back in on top of what i need to be doing and hopefully feeling like i should be productive and trying to be productive will eventually end up in me being productive so a little bit different to last year where it was more like i've got all these plates up in the air and i need to know which ones to keep juggling at when <laughs> you know which ones need spinning so the, the reason behind it and the philosophy behind it has changed a little bit in the fact that this is more to get me back on track as opposed to keep track. But the system is still the same that I'm using. Uh, I did at the end of June, no, beginning of July, I had the audio book of the bullet journal method and I skipped the beginning where it talks about how to do it because the how to do it, the mechanics, I think once you've read it a couple of times, you've got it. But the philosophy behind it in the second section is always really interesting to me because I pick out something new every time. Um, and because his method, his methodologies and his philosophies are very stoic, very much based in stoicism, which is what I'm i'm into i'm into stoicism that's that's my jam uh, nobody has control over you that you don't give them 
that's you know you have control over yourself and what you do and how you respond to things that is the only control you have and that is the only control anybody has nobody has control over what anybody else does or how they do it or anything else you just have control over what you do and what you have and what you're getting on with and that's core to how I work with my planner um, I have gone back well not back but it's always something it's something I've always done and I've always planned the same way you've been seeing my my planners and journals now for years and you know not an awful lot has changed it's more the philosophy behind how and why I do things as opposed to um, oh, other way there we go it's more the philosophy of how and why I do things than um, the structure of them I've always used tick lists I've always used check boxes I've always used bullet points because I grew up with PowerPoint um, that part of the bullet journal that the technicalities of it a few things I adopted, but more it was more about the organisation. But for me, most of the bullet journal has been putting the why behind it. You know, why am I doing this? Do I need to write this down? Instead of writing that down for the 18th time, how about I just cross it off and say, you know what, after a month and a half, I'm never going to get around to it. It obviously doesn't matter that much. You know, uh, that's the kind of thing that I've taken away from the bullet journal very much. So a lot of this is almost entirely the same. Uh, let me just put my put my switch under there, just to. That's better. No, there's not so much glare on the page. It's nice having daylight, but you have to account for the glare. Contents. I've literally just put. I've got the month which is why I use the colour coding so I can see which month is which easily when I flick through I'll just be able to pick out the days and then just the the pages that are for the month so my monthly is on where um, page 4 to 11 was June the monthly was on 4 to 5 12 is the start of July obviously we're not at the end yet the monthly is at the 12th to the 13th so we get when we get to the end of July and I have the page number I'll put it in there and then underneath it I just picked out anything that I knew I would need to refer back to so I've got my one book July 2020 and I've got my admin week notes um, I will shortly have some new ones I might do it on camera actually I might show you how I'm how I update it because I haven't updated yet today so if that's something you'd be interested in let me know in the comments or let me know in chat uh, and I will update it on camera because I haven't done anything today in it yet which is unusual for me it's usually the first thing I do but I was up early this morning like eight o'clock I went to bed last night at half past one and I slept like a log right the way through until 10 past eight this morning it's the best night's sleep i've had in months and i honestly think it was because i cleared my space i cleared some space in here and i finally feel like i'm getting somewhere with it uh it's still a desperate mess <laughs> don't get me wrong don't don't expect a studio tour anytime soon but you know, that side of the room still looks like an episode of Hoarders. Even more so now, because I've moved a whole ton of stuff that was over here, over there. Just piled it on top. I'm like, well, it's a big mountain anyway. I might just put it on top and go through it, you know. Uh, so, you know, Lisa, if you get a, a, a strange phone call at the weekend going, Help me! It's me. <laughs> And the message is, please come over, I need help. <laughs> or, I've fallen and I can't get up, <laughs> which is the other option. <laughs> hey Pam, hi Marie. When Covid came, your bullet journal became more journal than anything else. Yeah, I, I've i talked about this before, but I, I really... <sighs> I can't 
deal with so much coming at me all at once, all at the same time. And I had no interest in writing about it at the time. I don't want to deal with my feelings. I'm going to I'm going to wait until the feelings are no longer relevant. Then I'll deal with my feelings. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, craft a lunch are ha happening all over the place. All over the place. Uh, but I feel like I've cleared a blockage because I've just moved everything over here. Oops. Um, and I've somehow managed to put it in a way that I've never had it before. And it somehow works really well. And I'm like, hold on a second. So... Hopefully this will be actually sorted out. Shopping time. All right, see you later, Katie. You're doing one book August because you weren't ready for July. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wasn't ready for July, but I had to do it. I had to do it. You've still had your bullet journal ever since last year. You've adapted it to you. Yeah, I think that's the key with the bullet journal system. You have to learn how to use it, understand the philosophy behind it and what he does with it. And then once you understand that and you know which bits are going to work for you and which ones aren't, you're in a place to go, OK, I'm going to change this to work for me. I don't think you can go into it in the very first instance going, well, this isn't going to work for me. I'm going to change this, that. You know, you can't literally start your bullet points i keep spitting what is up with me you can't literally start reading the page where it talks about bullet points and you put this as a bullet point and go oh i'm not going to do that Blah. um i i do in my defense <laughs> the book came out using the second version of the bullet journal when the bullet journal originally came out it was using the exact same bullet points that I use for stuff. And he used to use squares for his to do's. Now it's changed to a dot point system, which for bullet journaling obviously makes more sense. Um, he's changed to a dot point system. And I was not prepared last year to say, oh, well, I'm going to get rid of my boxes because I like tick boxes. Um, that said, suddenly when I used this one, I was about five pages in and I suddenly realised I'd stopped using tick boxes. I'm now using dots. Yeah, I know. The collective gasp of everyone going, Rose not using tick boxes. <laughs> I, get, I, I get it. I, I, I know. I get it. So these are the adaptations I've done. I don't use an index. I'm sorry, I know that's how it's written in the book, etc, etc. However, contents go at the front of the book, indexes go at the back, okay? Indexes are alphabetical in the back of the book. Contents goes at the front in chronological order. So I have contents in the front in chronological order. OK, because. No, <laughs> if I put index there, I immediately stop using it because that is not an index. And my brain cannot get past the fact that this is not this is not an index. An index should be at the back in alphabetical order. An index is what you use after you've finished a book to catalogue and cross catalogue things. A contents list tells you where things are in the book. Yes. Oh, it bugs me so much that that's even in there. But, you know, I've just changed it to contents and now I'm perfectly happy. Future log. Now, I never used to use future log and I noticed that I'm not actually using the future log, as in writing things down in it. However, I do have a couple of things to write in here. And honestly, I'd just forgotten it was there. It wasn't that I don't need to use it or that I don't have a couple of things sat in my head going, oh, such and such is happening. Um, it's that I just forgot that I'd even put one in here. But a future login list form with no context doesn't help me at all. Um, Sylvia, Sylvia, write your life. 
she did a future log where it was broken into six like he does it but she put a calendar with it and I was like you know what that would work if it was linear for me so I put July August September I'm thinking October November December if I need it and then I've put the calendars in because to me it makes more sense to have a calendar on your future log than putting it back here with your monthly when you've already got the monthly list the monthly list works for me but I need a calendar if I have a calendar like this and a monthly list I don't need a monthly calendar if I don't have one or the other I need to have a, a calendar in block form so this made more sense um, and particularly in this format because I can now I'm currently trying to organize what I'm going to do for August and September for Patreon so, you know, I can go through and quickly go, right, what Tuesdays have we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 11, 18, 25. We've got five there, so that's going to be a reading week. So we've got 1, 8, 15, 22. Next reading week's 28th of September. Boom, it's there. It's done. So this is really useful. And obviously the idea is that, you know, under July, I put in any July dates I had. And then under August, uh, in fact, let's take it out. Why did I just take it out of the box? I didn't need to do that. Why did I do that? Let's fill it in. Let's update it. There's a novel idea. Let's update your bullet journal. Um, so 11th of August, this has been playing on my mind. Uh, 11th of August. Whoops. 11th of August. M.O.T. Due. But then, and this is why I've put it there, because otherwise I would not notice it's actually been moved forward a month by the government. Everybody's MOTs have been moved back. So if you've got an MOT in the UK that's due before the end of October, double check the date. You can go on DVLA's website and put your registration number in and it will tell you when your MOT runs out. Um, because it's been progressively moved back. March was moved back three months. April, May has been moved back two months. June, July has been moved back one month and you know so on. Some are being moved back a couple of weeks and all sorts of things. So double check. I've tried the Alistair method. It drives me insane. It, I can't I can't deal with it because I don't need to know what days I need to do things. I need to know what days things need to be ready for. I'm sorry about this camera moving about. It's, it's annoying me too because I don't know why it's jiggling about because it's not attached to the desk that I'm using. Let's see if I move this, if I move this desk over a little bit, does that help? That might help. I think that they're, they're touching somewhere and I don't know where or how. But it's annoying me too, seeing it wiggling around. So I apologise, but, you know, this was all only set up and plugged in about two hours ago. So, uh, yeah, check your MOT dates. So new, I can't write on that. I can't write that way, sorry. New MOT date. Oh, it's not too bad. Once I put my hand there, there's no glare, so because of the way I write. No, I've tried the Alistair method. I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't work for me. If this works for you, then the Alistair method could work for you as well. And I understand it. It's just that my work is not, imp it's not important when I do things. It's important what day they're due. And the day that they're due goes on my monthly calendar. I have a monthly list. I work from that. I really don't need to know oh, on Monday I'm going to do this and Tuesday I'm going to do that. I'm pretty much working from a, a weekly list at the moment. You'll see in a second. So this was June. Um, as always, when I start a new bullet journal if I or a new cover or whatever, or like I hadn't been using the bullet journal for three months, so I needed to get back into what I was doing. I collected the lists I had and I put it all into here so I, I wrote in my June 
Um, I've now started putting my dates in the middle so that I can work on that side and that side without it having to trace across. It's very handy. Uh, I've got videos. This is the days they're due. This is what we're doing and when. This is live classes. Almost all my videos, except for my vlogs and a few review videos, almost all my videos are live because I can't be doing with doing four hours of filming and, and creating and, and teaching and all that kind of stuff. And then another 12 hours of editing and listening to my own voice. I'm like, no, <laughs> just let's do it in two hours and be, have it done with. <laughs> so, yeah, I'd rather, I, 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 I do better teaching live anyway because I can interact and I can talk to people and people can ask questions and I work best with that. I think because I used to be a teacher in a classroom, that's how I learned to teach actually physically in a classroom um so i think when you move to online teaching it's automatic to feel like live teaching works better for you um so yeah these are all my live classes for youtube no for patreon all the astrology stuff for the month cancer look at the little crab isn't he cute appointments now these are appointments where i had to be doing something or be somewhere uh, obviously there were not a whole lot of those in june but i did have my two urban sketches stuff because i was running it so i had to be there and i didn't want it to get confused with my online classes so i treated it like an appointment where i had to be somewhere because i had to be at my desk the alistair method would work for you as a student oh yes it definitely would it definitely would, Ashley. There's a whole book on it. There's a whole book on the Alistair Method. But basically, you have a to-do list that's similar to this. You have a to-do list and then you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday on one side. And you decide when you're going to work on something. So for somebody like you who is doing an assignment that is due next week, you can have your assignment when it's due... So you can have a col separate column for due dates. Um, and then this side, you could say, right, I need to work this on this on Monday, Wednesday and Thursday. I can't work on it on Tuesday because I've got full day of lectures uh, and it needs to be finished for Friday. So that I can get everything done and hand it in on Monday. And still have the weekend off. That's how the Alistair method basically works. I mean, it's more complicated than that, obviously, but that's in a nutshell. That's what it's for. It's for splitting up a task that needs to be done over multiple days and being able to see how much have I got going on on Monday? How much have I got to? Oh, I've just had this new assignment and I really need to go to the library. When can I fit it in? Well, if I move that stuff I was going to do on Monday for that and spend an extra couple of hours on Thursday, I can go to the library on Monday afternoon, you know? That's that's what it's for. I think it was developed for students because it uses the Cornell paper, doesn't it? Yeah, you need it, Ashley. There's a whole book on it. And there's loads of really good videos. Um, one of the girls uses it. You know, Mitz's lot. I call them Mitz's lot. I don't even know if they are. There's, there's like, um, there's Brie and... Um, Penguins Creative and all, all those girls who do the Hobonichi style um, very um, pre-plan heavy as opposed to a lot of people do tracking you know when they've done something they log it uh, they're all pre-planners they all log things before they start doing them I think it would work for you really well Loads of videos on it. Go and check them out. It also translates to digital very well as well. If you've got a calendar or whatever, it translates. What else have I got going on? The MOT is due. The, I had something else I had to put in here, but I got sidetracked. Exactly said what you said about the index. A colour with index in the back. Yeah, indexes go in the back. Indexes are alphabetical. 
and we go in the back with the glossary. <laughs> oh! It's such a weird thing, but, you know, as soon as somebody says index, I flip to the back of the book. And because it was in my head, oh, it's the index, I was forever going, no, it's in the front. <laughs> and that alone, you know, he talks about friction, anything that's friction, anything that stops you doing something or adds an extra couple of seconds to what you're doing. It doesn't flow naturally. Well, that doesn't flow naturally. Oh, I need the index. No, it's at the front. So I changed it to contents and now I know where to find it and I actually use it. Look, I just haven't updated it. Uh, this column is tasks and this is tasks for the month that are ongoing tasks. My actual task, I don't have a task list of, if I wrote down everything I had to do this month on this page, that, that's, that's too much. <laughs> so what I use it for is stuff that's brought forward. So admin tasks mostly from um, Patreon. So anything that Katie's working on, anything that Katie's done that she needs me to check, anything that Katie's found that doesn't match up or she can't find a link for or anything like that for the classes, anything where she's like, this says there's going to be a PDF, but there's no PDF and I can't find one. I have to then go back in to my computer, find the PDF and give it to her so she can link it all up. Uh, because sometimes it's, well, most of the time, it's literally not that there isn't a PDF. It's that I haven't put the PDF in the right place because I am not organised. That's why I have a Katie. Um, so this was stuff from April that I still needed to find. This was stuff for May that I needed to organise. And this was stuff from June that cropped up during the month. Um, and then this is the daily stuff. Where I literally, I this was not ongoing while I was, during the month, this was taken from my to-do lists. Had I been using this book, how would I have done this? Um, and straight away I can see that that, which is circled and starred and very important, still has not been done. So I need to check if that, and this is what I use these for, I need to check if that has even been moved forward because that still hasn't been done. I know it hasn't been done because I've been crossed out. That drew my attention straight away the minute I opened that page. There's something on this page that's not finished. Well, guess what? This is this is One Book July. So One Book July sketchbook session we've done. Sketchbook junk journaling we did not do because we've got Meg. You don't need me to teach you about junk journaling when we've got Meg. Uh, so I did AC Journal 2. And now we're doing the bullet journal update. So I might as well cross that off because I'm doing it now. Uh, we're also doing Chunky Monkey update. So maybe I'll do something else next week. Or maybe I'll show you what I've done throughout the month. Because I've had creative bursts now in how things are working. So... Um, this was really an experiment in seeing what would I do if I needed to, for instance, highlight something about Maddie. Well, put a dog sticker next to it and highlight it. And then, well, that's important enough to have a star and a dog sticker and a highlight. So I guess it should go in the contents. Did I put it in the contents? No, I didn't. Well, that's stupid, isn't it? Oh, Oh, I know why. Because I was going to put VIP stuff. This is current. This is contents. So a running chronological list. So future log. Page two, page four to 11, June. And that's broken up into here's the monthly. Here's one book, July. Here's the admin stuff. 12 till whenever. That's July and that's broken up until into monthly 12 to 13 and anything else that I've got in there. But important stuff that I need to find straight away, like Maddie's meds, I was going to put separately. So that's why that's not on there. Page. So this is VIP. 
stuff that I might need to refer back to. I don't have my green pen or I would outline it in green. So page eight, Maddie, um, anxiety meds. She has the same meds for her anxiety as she does for her allergies because they make her drowsy and that, that helps. Um, but I can never remember what the doses are and I had to ring the vet yet again and ask them. So I wrote it down here and hopefully next time I'll be able to find it. I've also put it in about six other places, including on a post-it note inside the drawer where I keep her meds. Who'd have thought? <laughs> Literally, I have a little spot in my drawer. I've got my meds on one side, Maddie's meds on the other. Scooby doesn't have any meds. He probably should. He's bonkers. Um, I've got Maddie's meds on the other side. And underneath the box, I've stuck a post-it note to the bottom of the drawer with the dosage on. So when I pick up the box and go, damn, what was the dosage? Oh, there it is. Is that genius or what? And it doesn't matter if I get a new box because it's not written on the box. It's written in the bottom of the drawer. So as long as I keep them in the drawer, which I do because all medicine goes in the same drawer. Yeah, that works. Um, this is a, a timestamps thing for my live streams. My live streams are so long, I've started breaking them up so that people can find the timestamps because not everybody's interested in everything I do in a live stream. Some people have lives and they don't want to sit and watch a live stream for three hours and I get that. So I break it up into timestamps so it's a bit easier. This was admin week. Now I actually used it this week and you can tell because neat and tidy, neat and tidy, Neat and tidy. Oh my God, what the hell happened? <laughs> this is when I'm using it and working out what was going on. And I was trying to work out my Patreon tiers because we had to change our Patreon tiers for June. I'm sorry about the glare. I wish I could do something about it, but I can't. I can't write on my pages if I've got something underneath it. Uh, I'll put my hand like that. Does that help? It takes the glare off a bit. So this was me working out my patron tiers and what was going to be in which tier and what days it was going to go up and all the rest of it. And it's a pain in the arse trying to work it all out. It made my brain hurt and I had to rope Katie in and go, does this make sense? Uh, then I had all my, this is my copyright notes for, because we're using a book for part of the class. And obviously under copyright law, I can't just photograph or scan images from a book and give it out willy nilly. Um, I We're allowed under UK educational law to use 15% of the total amount of copyrightable material that is used in a class to give us handouts. Uh, so I had to add up all the, the different sections of things that we were using and work out how much of it I could use uh, and how much I was allowed to actually scan and use. So I've had to, I had to plan out week to week what I was going to give out and when we were going to have handouts and stuff like that. It's a lot of work goes into Patreon. People don't understand why, why, how come everybody goes onto Patreon and suddenly they don't do YouTube anymore? Well, it's because it's a lot of work. You're effectively taking all your YouTube stuff and doing it on Patreon and then coming back to YouTube and doing some more. You know, it's. It's a lot of work. That's why I like live streams, because I can show up for two hours, three hours, answer questions, chat to you guys, keep in touch, show you what I'm up to, and then boom, I don't have to think about it for the rest of the week. Uh, yeah, this is more admin week stuff. Sketching the new Patreon stuff for class in July, which has been moved forward. Apparently I never did this. Why didn't I do this? Maybe I was going to do it on camera and I forgot. Make a new header, haven't done that yet. Intro video, haven't done that yet. And then we're on to July. Now July, I actually was using it properly. So here's my July. Again, sticker from Courtney Diaz. Uh, 
same format this format worked really well for me i'm going to keep it going forward i think the vi the vertical columns by month works better for me than a calendar because a calendar i'm tempted to always go what's due today whereas with these i look at okay what's due this week what's due this week what's ha what's happening what do i still need to work on you know it just it makes more sense for me I'm put that back under there too so i don't have to hold it up um this is all up to date because i'm i keep up to date with this astrology we get a kitty cat for leo hello leos you know what tomorrow is 23rd of july do you know what tomorrow is it's a very important date in the calendar 23rd of july extremely important date i'm out of coffee somebody grab me a coffee would you um extremely important date in the calendar dog walking okay see you later what's tomorrow guys come on 23rd of july very important date most important day second most important day of the year Um, again, this is appointments. This would normally be stuff that I have to leave the house for. But no, Leo season starts today. It's the 22nd this year. Um, I'm not a Leo or anything connected to Leo. I have zero Leo in my chart whatsoever. So the closest I have to Leo is my... Uh, I have a sun sign like everybody else. That's the closest I have to Leo. This is normally stuff I have to leave the house for. At the moment, it's timed stuff that is not to do with class. So, for instance, I've got my 3pm One Book Julys in here because those are regular things I have to do every week for the, for the month. Uh, I've got my Urban Sketches dates in here, all that kind of stuff. It's only where I have to be on time. This is Patreon. This is the class stuff. I know that's live and I know what the times are. I don't need to write the times in my calendar. Uh, because I'm not going to book something at five o'clock on a Thursday because I know that from four till six on a Thursday I'm teaching live. Rising sign? No. Daniel Radcliffe's birthday. Spot the Harry Potter fans. Are Le Is Lisa and John Rush the same person? Are you the same person? Because we've never seen you in the same room together. <laughs> no it's way more important than daniel radcliffe <sighs> tasks again i liked the idea of keeping this to admin tasks so i'm keeping this to stuff that either i need to do stuff that i've passed to katie to do or stuff that katie has passed to me to do so it's specifically patreon admin and then my monthly my weekly my weekly sorry uh, oh i didn't put a header on this one i don't know how i missed that i was probably waiting to see how how much of the day i would use hang on to oh it's because it has a half week because it started on the thursday for some reason not sure why I started on the Thursday. I planned to start the week before, but I started on the Thursday. I'm sure there was a reason for that, but I don't remember what it was. So, very simple. I'm still using my day, month, date system. So, I just got TH forward slash July 2. So, Thursday, July 2nd. Um, at the top of my days, I tend to put whatever is happening that day so for instance um something i had to do was call hp that monday was my day off that that saturday i had an urban sketches at 11 i had a grocery delivery at three and i had a class at five nope my class was cancelled at five because it was a reading week that's why i had two other things going on i never do three things in the same day never ever give that many spoons to a day 
no. Um, sometimes I get something happening partway through the day, so like this day. This was a big important ACNH update. It was the July summer update, and I wrote in the time it was going to happen, which was 2 a.m. Um, I didn't find out about it until about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, which is why it wasn't at the top of the list. So if I know about an important happening or event that particular day, or if I've got something scheduled in here, I will write it at the top of the list. And I do tend to put in my classes as well and my YouTubes. Um, yeah, so that was all. That's just to-do lists. Note, I have started using bullet points. That wasn't a conscious decision. I just suddenly, in this book, I just suddenly started using bullet points and crossing things out. I've never done that before. Never, not once in a million years. I've always used crossed out as cancelled um, and then run it through as well. And I'm still doing that. You know, this crossed out and cancelled, not happening. But it is your birthday tomorrow, Burgess. Happy birthday. But, you know, not, not that important in the grand scheme of things. Not the birthday of one of the wolves. I know Halloween is important, the most important day to you, Ro, but I don't know what the second most important one is. Well, you are the closest so far, Mika. The most important day of the year is Halloween. The second most important day of the year is tomorrow, which is 100 days till Halloween. <laughs> it's the countdown. It's the final countdown. Do -do -do. Etc. We've got to be incited about something. Come on. <laughs> uh, but, but, but. This I added in. I uh, haven't kept up with it. I did another one the following week, but I really haven't stuck with it. I was doing my stuff form book July. So I had my bullet journal, my ACNH journal, my sketching and journaling, and my junk journal, which is my four notebooks in here. Not because I was trying to do something every day, but because I was trying to, you know, just see where are the gaps? Where am I doing things regularly and where am I not doing things regularly? Um, and pretty much bullet journaling and junk journaling got done almost every day. Uh, ACNH and sketching got done most days, but not every day. So ACNH sketching and journaling I kind of rotate them and I'll spend like an afternoon catching up on my junk journal or I'll spend a couple of hours doodling and catching up on my ACNH journal and stuff like that but I don't do religiously every single day I have to work on this it depends how much time I've got if I've only got half an hour to work on something I'll chuck in a couple of junk journal pages because that's the fastest thing to do the world revolves around Halloween. Exactly. Um, stuff that's in boxes. Again, that's important stuff. So that needs to go. It's almost the end of July. So I might as well start putting stuff in the, in the old boxes, right? Looking for my contents page. It's at the front. Um... Before anybody has a has a fit about my switch being face down, don't worry, it's got a screen protector on it. I am not in the least bit concerned. I've got four of them. I've got four screen protectors. If they get scratched, they get scratched. I'll replace it. It's, it's fine. Uh, that needs to get written down. Um, so I've got the 12th to 13th written down already. So this is the next one, 15th. And that's important notes. That was my camera notes because I was pricing up and trying to figure out how much and what was necessary for my vlogging camera, which is this one. That's pretty. Um, the vlog descriptions have a link to my camera if you're interested. It's not an all singing, all dancing. It doesn't even have autofocus, actually, which I didn't realise. Um, had I noticed it didn't have autofocus, I might not have purchased it. However, 
The reality of it is I hate autofocus and I nearly always turn it off. I prefer manual focus because that way, you know, when I pick it up, I'm not waiting. There's nothing more annoying. Well, maybe two hour long packaging videos. But the next most annoying thing is watching somebody go, focus! Focus in the middle of a video. I can only imagine how annoyed I would be if I had to watch myself doing that multiple times. It would drive me up out the wall. No. So the fact that it doesn't have a focus isn't actually a problem because I just film from far out and digital zoom in. Um, unfortunately, I didn't realise that on the first vlog or the second one, so that are a little out of focus. I apologise from now on, things will be. You can get more special effects without autofocus. Yeah, it's a lot easier to apply filters and stuff if you don't have autofocus. And also, things like um, stabilisation, like if you've got a slightly shaky bit of footage for whatever reason, um, you can use footage stabilisation a lot easier if you haven't got autofocus on. Autofocus makes it all go like this. But just the fact that I would have to watch footage of myself going, focus, that's, that's enough. That, that's enough to put me off ever using autofocus for anything. It's the first thing I switch off. <laughs> I've only got autofocus on this camera. And the only reason I have that is because obviously if people are lip reading, they need to see me in focus. But it doesn't matter if it's slightly off or if I move further away or it takes a second to catch up that's neither here nor there because I'm not normally talking when I'm moving I normally move and then I wait and then I talk so that autofocus is neither here nor there but this I never have this one on autofocus and if I do I usually switch it off within seconds my favorite favorite or not my favorite but my most common saying at the beginning of any class is oh my god I forgot to turn off the autofocus <laughs> Because every time I reboot my camera, the autofocus comes back on. hate it. Absolutely hate it. So, yeah, the fact that it doesn't have autofocus is... is I, I don't care. Uh, other people might. I don't. So... Uh, oh, yeah, my day... My week spilled on... Uh, this was one week. This was one week. So this is the second to the fourth. First to the fourth, technically, but I didn't use it on the first for some reason. Because I hadn't decided what I was going to do. The first was when I did my first One Book July setup and I set this up. There we go. Um, the sixth to the twelfth somehow ended up going onto another page because it was really busy. So rather than continue it here, I stopped and I decided to move on to the next week here because I thought if I use the left page for the week and it just uses up that page, that's OK. I can use this page for notes, which is what I've done here. If this page runs onto this page, that's OK, too. I can use what's left for notes. And then I've got one week here. So I've gone back to my always having things on a spread so because this starting a week here would have driven me round the twist uh, but having one go from this page to this page and then having a page and a half of what am I going to do with this was also not ideal so yeah my week my week now it starts here so any page I go to should be the start of a week uh, and if that means I end up with pages like this that are partially blank, then I'll do what I did here, which is I put in some washi tape. As you can see, duh, obviously I put in some washi tape and I've started using this for notes for something else. This is again, this is working out what I'm going to do for my Patreon stuff. It's not notes I need to refer back to. It's just working through things. I think better with a pen in my hand. So this was working out what pages I was going to do for what and when. 
for Patreon for those pages that I need to, you know, those copyright pages. Um, because I can only hand out so many per month and so which is so many per week and I've got to be really careful because copyright is important y'all but because I do educational classes it doesn't it's not it doesn't apply to me it comes under educational law and I did check with the learning resources manager so don't don't be coming at me saying oh that's not true <laughs> actually it is um this is bullet journals and vlogs. I was trying to work out what I was going to do when. Oh my God, my brain and maths. <laughs> uh, my brain and maths. My brain and time. My brain with maths and time. If you knew how long it took me to figure this out of when I was going to schedule vlogs for what dates in three different places, you would laugh. Um, and I still had to get Katie to come and help me and check that everything was working right. Uh, but currently, this is the bit I said I was going to come back to at the beginning. See, even remembered that today. Because I don't have loads of crap in my head. It's all in here. So I can remember important things like the fact that I'll come back to vlog scheduling in a minute. I'm filming vlogs during the week. And at the weekend, I'm reviewing the footage. Depending on how much footage I've got, the following week that will be broken up into maybe one vlog. So like this week I haven't filmed yet um, because it's not worth filming me dragging furniture about. That's not fun to watch. Um, so next week there might only be one vlog because there's only 20 minutes worth of footage to use. Um, or I might suddenly have a really busy weekend for no apparent reason and there'll be three vlogs because it'll be lots of footage you know it depends but if I had filmed today then next Wednesday if there was lots of footage for today next Wednesday would have a vlog for today on Patreon and then the following day it would go up on YouTube because patrons get it first and they get it ad free which you would think somehow would knock down the amount of money you'd make on YouTube videos but somehow I don't know it's like and I do it myself too people put a thing up on Patreon that's the day before a YouTube video and I still go and watch it on YouTube the next day even though I've already seen it apparently I'm not the only one because it has it doesn't affect your earnings at all on YouTube videos <laughs> Maths is your weakest subject, but physics maths you're good at. I'm the same. I'm exactly the same, Fiona. I Theoretical maths, anything like that, you know, complex equations, fractals, physics maths, mathematical theory, I find fascinating. Just do not add, ask me to put numbers into it. The minute I have to do numbers, I'm like, no, that's what Katie's for. <laughs> I call Katie my admin, but really what she is, is my maths person. She double checks anything I do with maths. When I'm working out percentages and discounts, I don't put anything up on the website without checking it with Katie first. When I'm doing currency conversions, I don't do anything without checking it with Katie first. <laughs> That's why this took so long, because I was trying to work out how long each vlog was when to space them out, when they would go up, what dates they were for, which was easy because I'd numbered them. Um, I've got my date number, date thing on, on my footage. I was mildly confused by the fact that I'd put it as June instead of July, but then I caught up on myself and now I know what I'm doing and I've changed the date. Um, but then I couldn't work out, right, that's going up the following week then, but then when is it going up on YouTube and how do I make sure that that goes up and that goes up and Kate if I'm doing this that's happening after that how does Katie know about this which is happening first you know it and it was doing my head in I had to rope her in and say just talk me through this your fancy engineering degree still comes in handy well yeah because you know I can row Giver 
I can tinker stuff into into submission, but you're the one who actually makes it work. <laughs> Katie is a very important part of the process. That's why she deals with all the money side of it. I can't, I can do my own accounts. I can do my own taxes because I've done financial accounting. I've done part of a SEMA. I've done the first two levels of a SEMA, but I can't, I can't do maths. When the spreadsheets are done, Katie's the one who checks the numbers. <laughs> oh. But we've got it now, we've got the schedule, and we've got it listed, and look, these are all ticked off, those are done. And then this is this week, 18th, 19th. Why does it say 18th, 19th? Oh, it's 13th to 19th. See, that's the kind of thing that I have this for, because that's confusing. That's confusing, that makes no sense. Thirteenth. There we go. Thirteenth to nineteenth. You do your own billing and you really don't enjoy it. Yeah. Mine's all automatic. People people do their own checkout process because it's, it's like a shop. But I've still got to do the back end stuff. And I, it's too important to randomly make a mistake with. So that's why I've got a Katie. Katie's awesome, by the way. I haven't got music going today, Katie. I'm sorry. I don't know where my little speaker is. I've just realised I didn't put it on the computer. Sorry. I normally have Katie's lovely music going. Go check out Katie's channel. Click on her name. Go give her a follow. She does some amazing flute music. It's what I normally play during my videos. And if you listen to my vlogs, that's what you can hear when I'm painting. I choose one of her beautiful mu pieces to put in the background of my vlogs. With her permission, I might add. Please don't go using it randomly if you want to use her vlogs. If you want to use her music, it's available, but you have to ask her. You have to go and talk to her and get a licence, OK? It's a commercial album. But uh, I already have that, so... Hey, Vicky! We're doing bullet journaling. Well, we're not doing, but we kind of are doing bullet journaling, but we're also just rambling and chatting and... Uh, ooh... That is very important information, which I'll come back to in a second, because I've got an important thing. Mm, do I want to do it as a separate video? I'll do it as a separate video, but I'll introduce it here as well, because, yeah, the patrons already know. No harm in the live people already knowing. And then I'll do a separate video on it for everybody else. Um... Have I gone through all of this? This is last week. I haven't gone through last week yet. Because I've spent the last two days asking about the studio. Taxes by August. That's really important. I have to I have to keep writing that. Even though it's on the first page and it's on the second page and it's now on the third page. I've got to keep writing it because I have to keep remembering because this is nearly the end of July already. And when I wrote it down the first time, it was only the 4th of July. Taxes by August. It's very important. And it's getting progressively more important. So the first time the star got a highlight. The second time, the star and the line, the arrow got a highlight because it had been moved forward. This time, the star, the arrow and the thing itself are getting a highlight. Next week, they'll get a big highlight. <laughs> because you'll know it's not going to happen this week, right? Because I'm moving my studio about. Of course it's not. Editing vlogs, covers and descriptions. Oh, I've done it all. Look at that. I can turn that off now. I can just done so that was monday so in order to not have a day where i'm like uh why did i go from monday to choose to wednesday i'm going to put monday july 21st and i'm going to make a note moving studio oh freaking day Exclamation point. 
Even Maddie was fed up with me by the time I was done. So, <laughs> I've got a lot of clearing and sorting to do, but all the furniture's moved, so all the heavy lifting is done. Um, now I can move on to today, because I'm done today yet. 22nd, so important thing, 3 p.m., YouTube, one book July, Bujo update. That's happening, so I can fill that in. I'm going to move this again now because, but you'll be able to see because I'm writing. Um, what else today? Was there anything else I needed to put down for today? Oh, yes, groceries. I need to do a grocery run and by grocery run I mean I need to order online for delivery um, so I'm going to need a grocery list and this is a nice big space so you know what I'm going to put groceries up here rather than starting a new collection I'm using up the space because I've got small writing so I tend to end up with a big space on one side of the page so I'm using it for you know little bits and pieces like that so my groceries um, let me quickly jot down a couple of things that I know I need coffee coffee whitener bread marge pasta and tomatoes and I'm out of veg so I'll do a list for veg. That's probably going to be a longer list. Normally I'd box it off, um, but that's probably going to be a longer list. So I don't want to box it off just yet because I don't know how long the list's going to be. And there's no point doing it all the way down here if it's only going to be to there. So when I'm done the list, I'll have to go through the fridge and the cupboards and everything else. That's just off the top of my head stuff I already know I've already run out of um what else what else what else so i need to put in a grocery order i need to i need to do that video that i just mentioned which i'll come back to in a second um and I have a list at the back of my book, which is YouTube ideas, because everything that goes through my on my head as a, ooh, I might have to do that as a YouTube video, doesn't always make it to fruition. A awful lot of it gets crossed off because I'm like, nobody's going to watch that. Don't be ridiculous. Um, but some of them actually do make it. Um, and this is one of them. So I'm going to arrow that forward. There. As... A video that I'm actually going to pre-record. I'm going to pre-record it like this but I'm still going to pre-record it. Minimal editing. And oh my god iMovie's got so good lately. I haven't used iMovie since um, Snow Leopard? Mountain Lion? Mountain Lion. That was the last time I used iMovie and it was a bit naff. A little bit naff. Oh yeah, Vicky, come and join our Discord. There's loads of people on Animal Crossing. We've got an entire chat. Come and come and somebody give her the, the Discord link so she can come and join us. Or anybody who plays Animal Crossing, come and join us. One of the mods will get that. I was going to look for my mouse, but one of the mods will get it. Um, yeah, we've got a whole list of people who've got their their codes on the on the Discord. It's only for mine and um, Little Raven Inks Patreons who pay who play Animal Crossing patrons and subscribers. Uh, somebody will give you the link. Patience. Either Katie or Risha will be getting the link at this moment, and they will both. Put it in the link, in the chat, at the same time. Guaranteed. And probably Mika as well, because they're all... 
if Cody was here, it would already be in because she's like so fast with links, it's ridiculous. I swear she memorizes them all and just types them out. There we go. Oh, Mika wins. There's the there's the Discord. Anyone who plays Animal Crossing or is a gamer and just likes to hang out, um, because Mika doesn't play Animal Crossing, she plays Lord of the Rings. Um Oh, you're Courtney's patron, but you're not my patron. Oh, <laughs> oh I see. I see what it's like. Um, <laughs> and bring any of your patrons. If any of your patrons are playing and want to want to come join us, feel free to bring them across. It's fine. Katie's at the door. Katie's the, the bouncer, so she, she makes sure it's only people we know. Uh, what else do I need to do today, guys? Come on. Oh, I need to message. I had an idea. I've been having this dilemma. One of the things that causes me a problem with having clear outs is that I never know what to do with stuff. I am not reliable physically at getting to the post office. Yeah, we have lots of lots of people to play with. And we've got swaps and trades and all sorts going on. Um, there's a, in fact, there's a whole room that is just people listing their friend codes. And you, anybody who is in that list, you can just go and add them. And they're all people that are either my patrons or Courtney's patrons. And now yours as well, if you want to bring them over. Yes, Katie's added when either of us goes live on YouTube or Twitch or when either of us uploads a YouTube video. So you get the notifications going, ding, there's a YouTube video, ding, there's a Twitch stream starting, anything like that. It's very cool. She's clever like that. <laughs> She's better at Twitch than I am. I'm like, I don't know how to do that. I'm good with computers, as in I can take them apart and fix them. But I fixed my MacBook. You know, I said my MacBook sound thing didn't work. Well, I got really fed up with not having sound and then it not working on the speaker either. And the place that I normally take it to isn't open yet. They're probably open next week, but they weren't open last week. <laughs> you didn't even know Discord existed. <gasps> that's because you're on Courtney's Patreon and Courtney doesn't have it listed on her Patreon. If you were on my Patreon, you'd know it was there. <laughs> yeah, me and me and post offices are not compatible. They give me panic attacks. And I procrastinate going to them. And when I finally do go to them, I, I go in and I walk out again. And I have to go in three or four times before I can actually go and... Oh, it's... Oh. I need somebody who can, like... It'd probably be quicker. It takes me that long. Sorry about the camera wobbles. I don't know why it's doing that. I need to find out. Uh, it takes me that long to get to the post office. That, In actual fact, it'd probably be quicker for me to get Katie to come over here and go and do a post office run for me. <laughs> That's how long it takes me. This is why I don't have an Etsy shop. Because just the idea of going to the post office makes me go, yeah. <laughs> so I order the things online. I don't, ooh, I don't, I'm teasing you, Vic. I'm teasing you. You were in my classes for years. I'm teasing you. <laughs> um message oh yeah i'm going back um yeah not knowing what to do with things my ideal would be to sell the stuff that's worth selling you know just tuck it on ebay and get rid of it e excellent a little bit more money to put towards something else that i want to replace it i'm talking mostly art materials here um or give stuff that is perfectly good but i don't want or need or use to somebody else who will use it 
you know? But I have this kind of thing about, well, if it's good stuff, I don't want to just chuck it in a charity shop because they don't know what's worth keeping and what's not. You know, they tend to go, oh, it's kids stuff. It's art materials. It's kids stuff. And I'm like, no, those pe pencils cost a lot of money, actually. I just don't like them. So I would rather give them to somebody who will appreciate it and go, oh, that's a nice set of pencils. Thank you very much. Um, it's not the monetary cost. It's the fact that they'll end up as kids supplies. I mean, I could put them outside the front door in a big box saying free art supplies if I wanted, if that's what I wanted. But I can't get over that mental block. It's weird. But I do know a girl, and it just occurred to me this morning, that she is very involved in local community arts. So what I'm going to do is message her and find out if there is a community group or anything like that. You know, people who go, I know there's people who go around to old people's homes to do crafting sessions and art sessions. There's groups that get together that have a monthly art session. Uh, there's all sorts of things. And I trust this girl that if I give her, like, here's loads of stuff, everything from kids' art supplies to high-end art supplies, take the lot and use it where it's it can be of most use. She will do that. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to see if there's... See if she's up for that, because then I can just box it all up and just split it into kids stuff, craft stuff and actual art materials. And say, so here you go. There's the three boxes. You figure out where it goes and she will use it for local community groups and stuff like that. So I would prefer that, that it will go to people who will use it and, you know, make use of it. It will not go to waste. It's nothing I hate more than waste. You should see me when I'm painting. Come and watch me on Twitch. It's hilarious because I am so anal about not. Um, the Urban Sketching Group, they're mostly working artists and people who've either got their own supplies already or are not interested in buying supplies off somebody else. Or, um, I mean, I have taken stuff, especially the kids' stuff. When we do tables... Or we have done tables in the past at the local fairs. We've had an urban sketches table and we've had kids come along. And I've I've donated kids supplies and art supplies and, you know, sketch paper that I would never use and stuff like that. And loads of extra pencils because there's only so many HB pencils you can use. Um, I've, I've taken that sort of stuff down and, and already donated it to them. And they've got a box full of stuff that they haul out when we do things like that. This is for other other groups because most of the urban sketchers are already sketchers so they've already got what they need this is more kind of community groups where it's like mums and toddlers or you know stuff like that or they're going to old people's homes and doing stuff with them or they've got a live drawing session twice a week and you know things like that but she's she's very involved with a lot of these groups she knows almost everybody and it would be a lot easier for me to just give her, you know, kids, crafts and art stuff and say, here you go. But I need to message her. Because at the moment, a lot of these groups are starting up again. On a smaller scale, but they're starting up again. And the fact that I've been quarantined for three months and almost all of this stuff has been in my house for that three months and beyond... It means, you know, they're not even going to have to worry about contagion or anything like that or decontamination or whatever, because it's, you know. I've been in isolation, so if I can get rid of them as well before. That then or before I come out of isolation, that'd be even easier. So that gives me an incentive now to actually get rid of stuff that I'm not going to use. So a lot of the things that I'm going to get rid of is things like, and I can't believe I'm saying this, sets of things where I've only got, like, I only use half the colours and things like that. Because I don't draw landscapes. 
very much. I do urban sketching, but I don't draw landscapes. So I very rarely use greens or blues or anything like that uh, in the traditional sense. Most of what I get through is natural colours, earth tones, because I draw a lot of animals and um, portrait colours because I draw faces and things. Yeah, we've been doing urban sketches via Zoom on virtual sketch walks via Google Maps and uh, Mika's been coming along to them and uh, Risha. It's been fun, but we've, we've finished doing those now because they're going to start doing out and about ones again. You should see if there's an urban sketches in your area, Mika. Because usually, I mean, I don't know how other people do it, but certainly our group, we designate where we're going to go. And then we find a spot in and around that area. And some people will wander around and, you know, move about. And other, most people will just stay in that one spot and draw whatever with it, they're there to draw for two hours. So it's, you know, it's not like you go out and you've got a frog march <laughs> through the streets or anything like that. You know, you are literally just, we'll meet here and we're going to sketch that. And if you don't want to sketch that, that's fine. But most of us are going to sit here and sketch that. So, yeah, you should see if there's one in your area. I'm sure there probably is. Look on the Urban Sketches website. There should be a list. And if there isn't one, just get a couple of friends together and start one. There's always somebody. Go on the Urban Sketches group on Facebook, the the main Urban Sketches group, and see if there's anybody in your local area who'd like to go out sketching, and you'll probably get three or four people. You can have an informal Urban Sketches group. Anyway, back to the bullet journal. Back to the bullet journal. What else do I need to do today? Oh, I've got to put my... I've got an Amazon thing that I need to order. I need to put that in tonight. Because uh, it's not going to arrive for a week. So I've got to work out when it's going to arrive so that I know when I'm going to need it. Uh, I think that's it. I'm trying to remember what else it was that I had coming up. I think it was the Urban Sketches thing, actually. I think it was Urban Sketches Live Meets are starting again in September. I'm sure that was it. Did I write that down in the index? I put a sticker on it. Did I write it down? No, I didn't. I put a sticker on it and I still haven't done anything with it. Gosh darn it. OK, so this one has been this is in June. It hasn't had anything done with it and it was marked important in June. So what was it? Romani's Google Drive is at 81%. Yeah, that's kind of important. I need to do something with that. So arrow forward. Colour in the dot to show I've done something with it. Come along to here and I'm going to put that because it didn't get done when it was on a daily page. There's no point putting it on today because the rest of this week is taken up with um, a commission that I've got to do by next week. And sorting this mess out. So I can't put it on a daily page. So that is a prime candidate for, let me put it on the monthly tasks. Um, it's not to do with Katie, it's got nothing to do with Katie, but it's still important and it might be to do with Katie eventually because a lot of what they've got on Romany's Drive might be more up to date over on the Romany's Realm Drive or it might be something that should be on the Romany's Realm Drive or it might be something that I need to give to Katie to organise and give back to me, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to put a little sticker there, which for at least a couple of days, I'll remember that the little orange sticker is something important. And I'm going to put down, I'm going to put a list down here of VIP stuff. 
uh, because that one is very important. This would be where I'd put things like the, the car MOTs due. Um, call ant, ant to book in the car MOT and stuff like that. Um, so actually I will put that in there as a note. MOT moved to September. Otherwise I'll keep looking at it and going, when is that due? When is that due? When is that due? Oh, I better ring Ant. Oh no, it's not due till September. And round and round and round and round and round. You know what it's like having the same conversation with yourself over and over again. So this one is needs to be done. It's very important. Our G drive at 81% underline. <laughs> I don't know how I've got a Google Drive to 81%. Uh, I suspect what I've done is I've thrown a video in there because that's the only way I can think that I would ever get to 81% on anything. My, um, my photos on Google are backed up constantly and have been since the day I got my Google account. They automatically update from my phone. Every piece of crap I ever do goes in there. And I still, I don't think I've even used 10%. So something is in my G drive that shouldn't be there because I should not be at 81%. It's virtually impossible to fill up a G drive unless you put in videos. So I must have either video or audio clips in there somewhere. Hi, Cody. Uh, that's pretty much it for the bullet journal. As you can see, it's not precious. It's not tidy. It's not neat. Um, that's an ongoing project, actually. That's for my Patreon banners. 19, page 19. I need to put that on the front page, actually. Let's put that in. Um, have I got anything else that needs to go in? I've put the camera stuff in. Uh, oh, this needs to put in 16, 17. No, 16. So I'll put this in contents. So 16 is the copyright pages. That means nothing to anybody else, but I know what it means. Uh, 16. And then um, Patreon banners. Nope. See, that's the kind of thing I would change because I'll be confused if I don't get rid of that. Right, vlog list 17 and then 19, that's the Patreon banners. Even though the title says scans, if I put it in here, that's what I'll, I'll look for is the Patreon banners bit, but I'll put other scans on here as well as and when I need to do them. Hi, Evelyn. So as soon as I, as soon as I have another scan that I need to do, I'll put it on here, but the important scans are the Patreon banners. Everything else is just incidentals that I'll think, oh, I should do that while I'm doing this. This is stuff that I actually need to follow and log. So I've kind of got collections where I've got the important stuff that is vital to the collection up here and other stuff that happens to be. It's kind of like, um, what's that method where you have stuff where you you list it by area? Is it the that ridiculous 47 folders thing that bloke does? I can't remember what it's called. Getting Getting things done, GTD system, is that it? where it's like um, you group things by where they would be done. So you have a list of stuff that you need to do when you're at home. You have a list of stuff that you need to do on the computer. You have a list of stuff that you need to do at the shop or when you're out running errands in town or whatever. Um, this is a similar thing, but it's to do with working. Um, because if I'm going to drag my scanner out and sit very uncomfortably scanning things for a good five to ten minutes. Uh, I might as well grab all the other stuff I need to do and get it done all at the same time as have it have to do it again later. Does that make sense? So this is what's the actual collection. But incidentally, I also need to scan this piece of paper for something else and put it down here. 
So it is getting things done. OK, thanks. I saw the 47 soldiers folders with that thing and I went, <laughs> yeah, I'm too lazy for that. <laughs> I never actually bothered to read the whole thing, but I've picked up bits and pieces of it as other people have talked about it. Um, so, yeah, this is all pretty much redoing the frog with the new eye line art. I've started it, but I haven't finished it. So it's got a half line through. Um, the scans, where am I, am I up to? I've done the final scan for him and I haven't uploaded him yet. That's what I have to remember to do later. That Oh, I'll put that on my list. There we go. That's the other thing I have to do. Scans. Trello. Heckin' important. Of course... In order to do that, I think I've got to get my scanner out. No, I've already scanned it. I just need to upload it. I just forgot to do it yesterday. So that's my updated bullet journal. That's it. That's how it works. This is my brain. It's not pretty, but it functions. That many folders would hurt your head and defeat the purpose. Yeah, I'd spend my entire time organising my folders and then reorganizing my folders and then color coding my folders and then buying new folders that were nicer and then rewriting labels for the folders and then rewriting the folders with nice print and then probably typing them up with a nice font and printing them out and cutting and sticking them and putting them on all the folders and nothing would ever get done because I would just spend my entire time playing with folders. I can understand it being useful if you work on a computer all the time because it's drag and drop you know that would be fantastic for organising folders in the, on a computer. But with all the cloud storage and you doing everything on your mobile phone these days, who, who the heck needs that? You know? <laughs> um, yeah, I can't. I mean, it'd be great for digital stuff or if you've got a lot of paperwork. And I could understand somebody like Burgess using it for like, because she's a writer. She's got so many different things that she's organising all at once. And I know, Car I know um, Carrie uses it because she's got lots of different projects all on the go at once. But no, I was like, set up 47 folders. Nah. <laughs> the only thing that I took from the getting things done stuff that I thought, actually, that's a good point. That's worth remembering. Uh, but I still don't always do it because it really depends on, like I say, how lazy I'm feeling. Sometimes I'm just too lazy to do it. It's easier to write it down. Um, but he advocates if something can be done right now and it's only going to take a couple of seconds, just get up and do it now. Don't spend the time writing down, must call such and such to confirm tonight. If you're like, well, they're home. I could do I could do it now. I could just text them now and ask them if we're still on for tonight and they'll get back to me later. So instead of writing text so and so, just go and text them. Get it done. It's off your plate. It's not your problem anymore. It's now officially delegated to somebody else. You know. That actually stuck with me. And I do I do tend to if I think of something that I think, oh, I really should, uh, I really should put the, the bin out. I keep forgetting to put the bin out. I really should do that. Um, especially if it's a little job that I keep forgetting to do. And I'm not in the middle of something. I'll go, you know what? I'll go and do it now. It's literally walk to the kitchen, walk to the front door, open the bin, chuck it in, close the front door, come sit back down. I can do that without getting distracted. Provided I don't also go, I'll go and do that now. And since I'm getting up and going to the kitchen anyway, I'll go and make myself a coffee as well. Because th if that happens, that's it. I'm like, that is how I constantly think, oh, I need to empty the bin. I still haven't done that. <laughs> that's how that happens. But if I can and I'm able to literally just get up, go and do that, and come back then I will do it even if that then means that I go oh while I'm up I'll make a coffee 
I treat them as two separate tasks now, otherwise one of them isn't going to get done. Guaranteed I will come back with a coffee and the bin will still need emptying tomorrow. <laughs> you wouldn't believe how fast Cody gets through notebooks, Lisa. Do you not watch the class videos? <laughs> She shows us her notebooks in class and I swear it's a different one every week and not because she started a new one. It's usually because she's added a new one or she's had to continue and she's like, oh, I finished that one. That's that's full. <laughs> that was last week. <laughs> so one of the things I got a lot of feedback about I'm not going to stay on for too much longer because I'm losing the light and I need to get my room sorted out and I need a coffee. Um, but one of the things I, I got a lot of feedback on from the vlog yesterday was, and the one I put up for Patreon because Patreon got an extra vlog that doesn't go out on YouTube, um, was that people like enjoyed seeing how I collage and what I do and how I pick things. It's a big thing that people are like, I don't know how to collage. Um, if you don't know how to collage you're thinking about it too hard that's my tip so I thought since I've got this because I moved my desk I've ended up with a big pile of crap right so I thought I would go through my big pile of crap and see what's collage stuff and what I'm going to use and what I can use and what I've got and what I haven't got and you know turn it from a big pile of crap which is usually where you're at. You look at this big pile of crap and you go, this is collage material. What am I going to do with it? And then you get all hung up on, oh, but oh, I don't know how to collage properly. And all oh, this doesn't match this and this doesn't go with this. It doesn't matter. Just collage it. Um, I'm not going to junk journal at the moment. I'm just going to open my journal to a new page and see what we can do. I'm oh, I moved the I moved the thing in, didn't I? So you could see what I was writing. That's why I haven't got enough room on my desk. Ba ba. Okay, so those are supposed to be in there. Uh, oh, an envelope. Envelopes are always useful. This one. I kept because I liked the newts on the front because we were doing newt stuff. I've already drawn my newt. My newt. <laughs> He's bigger than that. So I guess that's just that's just junk journaling and stuff now. So I will put that to one side for a moment because no doubt there will be lots of crap that I need to put into things. And sometimes the purpose of something like this that you don't necessarily know what to do with right away is to put other stuff in it. And it's an envelope, so it's useful to do that sometimes. Um, witchy thing. Just, just cute. Was going to cut it out and stick it on a page. So let's start by cutting it out. Can you believe it's quarter to six and I have not yet put my studio lights on? Usually I've already got my studio lights on when we start streaming. But check me out with the daylight. I feel like I feel a bit like um what's his name? Boris Karlov. It burns, it burns. Not used to sunlight. I don't know which way round that's supposed to go, but I kind of like it like that. Uh, I found this, which I thought was funny. Which, please. And it's blue, so those two go together. <laughs> there we go. So there's a pairing we've already got. Two witchy moony type things. That's a set of stickers that shouldn't be in there. That should be in here. Ooh, grey stuff. Grey stuff and grey stuff. Uh, don't know why that's in there. More stickers. I don't need stickers right now. 
these should all be in there I don't know why they've come over there oh there's my collage packet that I've got so I'll take that out because then if I've got stuff that I don't want to use I'll shove it in my collage packet uh, that's a really big piece of paper I'm never going to use a piece of paper that big so let's chop it in half and chuck it there in the collage pile more grey stuff dead piece of backing paper bits of gold thingy strange roses I'm not in the mood for roses that can go in the collage pile bluey grey stuff grey stuff Ooh, witchy stuff 100 days to Halloween tomorrow excellent that will be used tomorrow then Ooh, bat wait a minute haven't I got an embellishment thing isn't one of the junk journaling prompts embellishment? Number 23! <gasps> Number 23! 100 days to Halloween! Embellishment! Skulls! Bats! Creepy stuff! Yes! Uh, dragonfly. Mm -hmm. Bits of card. Again, never going to use bits of card that big, so I might as well chop them in half and chop them there. Oh, Scooby picture. Oh. Oh. Scooby picture. What well, loads of Scooby pictures in there. I had some Maddie pictures in my junk journal. Did I put a Scooby picture in my junk journal? There's a, there's a Maddie picture, but no Scooby picture. I'll put him there. We'll use that in a minute. Uh, another piece of paper that's too big. I like those neutral tones, actually. There's brown in that with grey. kind of like those neutral tones together. Ooh, she's pretty. Johnson's fluid beef. Ew. The most perfect form of concentrated nourishment. Oh, it's like bovril. And what's this one? Oh, it's got a creepy clown on it. Yeah, we, we don't do creepy clowns. Hell no. How about we chop off the creepy clown? There we go. And we'll keep them off. Oh! Dem bones, dem bones. Creepy cats, Halloween. Ooh, Uncle Fester. Yay, Adam's family. Ha! 100 good days to Halloween. That can go in there as well. Uh useful bits of pages oh that's nice oh and it's not on the back of oh that's nice too that gray elephant there we go looks like we've got a gray page coming oh, that's cool uh what's this uh, yeah i don't want to use it right now though so it's too big for my book if it's too big for my book tear it in half Otherwise, it'll never get done. Oh, that was a sketch reference I wanted to use. Uh, oh, collage bits. Ooh. Witchy, fiery collage bits. Hmm. Bits of journaling paper. Nice postcard. Envelope. Eh. What's this? Oh, random piece of torn paper. Neutral in tone. More random neutral paper. It's got some interesting bits and pieces on it, but I don't know if I want to use it right now. However, it does match these colour tones. So I'm going to put it with this piece of paper because I know I'm going to use that piece of paper for my Halloween stuff. Uh, that was also a sketch reference. That's just a... I live here thing. Why was I keeping that? Don't remember. Ooh, ghosties. Cool. Halloween. Awesome. Poppy. More Mr. Boo. Let's put him in there as well then. Uh, more collage papers. Ooh, a map and interesting backgroundy type things let's put all of that with those 
Another map. Where's this one of? Guatemala. <coughs> Guatemala. Must be from my mum and dad. Uh, only the top bit is interesting, so let's put that in the recycling and put that in the collage pile. Ah, look how cute. Oh. Oh, I like them. I want to use them. I'll put them in my sketch references. That's a cute little card. We got happy and not happy. And it's a this is a customer service card, right? It says not happy. And you open it up, tells you to contact. Happy, open it up, tells you where to leave a review. It's very cute, isn't it? Sorry, it's the other way around. Happy, here's where to leave a review. Not happy, here's where to contact. What a clever idea! I don't even know where it came from. I think it came with um came with something I bought. Oh, Anchor. Anchor. It's my um, charger for my phone. I've got a flat charger for my phone. You put your phone on top of it. Yeah. Isn't that a clever idea? So I kept that because I thought it was cute. I originally kept this because I liked this. But when I looked at it earlier, I liked this. And it's kind of witchy, so I'm going to stick it on that page. Uh, too bright. Interesting. Sketchbook stuff. Probably should be in a sketchbook. Fireworks. Nice, but not right now. Maps. Ooh, that's kind of handwritten witchy bits. Neutral, neutral. This is a beautiful piece of paper, but I don't want to use it right at the moment. So that's going in the collage pile. Actually, that's blue. That's blue. That's blue. That's blue. That's got gold on it. That's blue. That's gold. Let's put all those together. Uh, grungy. Grungy Halloween-y type stuff. Uh, what's this? Random piece of Christmas something. What was I going to do with that? Probably use it in my Christmas journal. So I'll put it there because that's going over in my Christmas pile. Because I just sorted out something earlier. What's this? Welcome to our store. That's nice of you. Who are you? It doesn't actually say who you are. So that's not much of a welcome card, is it? But I do like this. This is pretty. Mm, I like that. I'll keep that. Ooh, transparent. That's one of the prompts as well. Uh, 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 nice bit of journaling card there. I don't want to use it, though. What's this? Ooh, creepy Halloween tree. Excellent. One of my favourite Halloween stories. Oh, excuse me. That should be in a different pile, but I'm going to put it there. Oh, Drama Llama. Hello, Drama Llama. I'll put you in a sketchbook. A big old label. A big old Halloween coloured label. Uh, another big label. Don't need two. Ooh. Ooh, two of those. More labels. We can't get these here. They're so hard to get hold of. I'm going to use one and keep one. This is probably why I haven't used it yet. That's really clever. What's really clever? What did I do? Or did somebody else have an idea? So <laughs> it might be somebody else talking. Hubby writes down all his tasks on a Monday and then transfers them over day to day. Drives you crazy, but it gets he gets through books so quickly. Yeah, I write them down day. To, I do the opposite. I write them down day to day, but I work on a weekly spread. Bye, Brenda. She's probably been gone ten minutes. I keep forgetting to check the chat. 
we've been going through clothes to purge, organise, etc. While I watch, gotta have some furniture before we paint the floors. <laughs> did you just say dragon stuff, or did I seriously mishear things? I don't remember saying dragon stuff. Did I say dragon stuff, Miss Maddie? Did I say dragon stuff? I don't remember saying dragon stuff. Do you always have a plan for your journal pages, <laughs> journaling pages before you start? Do I look like I have a plan? <laughs> no. Sketches, generally, yes, I have an idea of what I want to do before I start. Journaling pages, I'm like, cut and paste, stick it on. I'm literally just going through a big pile of crap and I've already got material for three pages. Just from going, ooh, that much is that, I can do that. There is no plan. Just do. Planners are for planning. Journals are for journaling. Off to dinner. See you, Fiona. Thanks for joining us. Updated Instagram again. Been avoiding it for a month. You haven't been avoiding it. You've just been too busy playing Animal Crossing. You write it on the day and then just work from that until you need to turn the page. Yes. And that's why I use a two-page spread because no way in hell... Am I ever going to have a week where I need more than two pages? Even in a busy admin week like we just had, I didn't need more than two pages. That's just never going to happen. I used to work in a college full time teaching 30 hours. And I still never needed a two page spread for a week. So having a two page spread for a week or more than a two page spread, having a two page spread for a week where I've got most of it here and some of it there if I need it. And then notes on the other side that works for me. It's basically like the Hobonichi set, set up, but less organized. I don't have lines drawn across because I might have a like two things on Monday and then 12 things on Tuesday, especially because Mondays are my day off. Or if I'm running errands on a Monday, I might have 15 things on Monday and then one thing on Tuesday because I've only got one thing to prep for. Or I'm filming, so I'm only working on one thing. Let's watch the 100 Days to Halloween stuff you do. That was going to be the first one I did, actually. I said I wasn't going to junk journal and then I'm like, well, maybe I will. <laughs> uh, ooh. That should be in there. Random piece of something brown. Oh, that's the, that also needs to go with Richard's pile, so that needs to go there. Little pile of stuff building up for you. Oh, more witchy blue stuff. Uh, oh, that's an Animal Crossing printout. That should be in my other journal. Let's put it with my switch. <laughs> that's clever, isn't it? Uh, this is lovely, but I don't want to. This is too big for my journal, but I don't want to tear it up because I don't know what I might want to need want to use of it yet. So I'm just going to fold it in half. Uh, another envelope. Do I want to use it for anything? Not right now. So I'll put that with that one. Those can go in that pile there. Ooh, another random bit of grey stuff. That is something I need for the other thing I was going to show you but you know what I'm not going to show you yet I'm gonna patrons have already seen it or well, class patrons have already seen it some of them have um, I'll do a separate video on it random notes check FP still works yes it still works fountain pen I was testing my fountain pen <laughs> apparently that's the kind of random weirdness that most people would chuck in the bin. Me? Goes in the college pile. Rats. Rat references. That goes in the sketchbook. And that should be in my junk journal already. Because that is other random bits of stuff that I might want to use in my junk journal. So, okay, I've got more than enough for two pages. So I'm going to put that lot there. I'm going to put that lot there and that's it. I'm just going to make, that's all blue witchy stuff and gold bits. 
or blue and gold bits. So that's just all going to go together on a page and I'll decide what I'm going to do with it when I do it. Uh, this is all grey and neutral tone bits and interesting stuff. Um, again, I'll chuck it on there and decide what I'm going to do with it when I do it. And I will literally, once I finish streaming, I'll do these after straight away. Uh, because as soon as I finish streaming, I'm going to need to... You've got library card holders. Oh, cool. Oh, you don't need to post them to me. I'll I'll get them from you when I see you. As long as you're not moving like 200 miles away, you need to update me on this. We did not update, Ro, that we were moving. We need to do this. Um, yeah, these will get done tonight. Uh, while I'm in the middle of sorting stuff and I need to stop and have lunch and I need to do a bit of Animal Crossing and I need to do this, that and the other and I've got stuff to upload and uh, but I'll be stuck at the computer because I've got stuff I need to do here uh, I will do bits and pieces of this while I'm doing it that's that's what I do so let's grab ye old junk journal since you want to see the 100 days and it is 100 days to Halloween tomorrow so it's appropriate that we do a Halloween page in the old junk journal because tomorrow's and this is basically how my brain works that's pretty much it so tomorrow's quote post tomorrow's prompt that's the word tomorrow's prompt 23 embellishment well what embellishment do I use more than anything uh, bats and mushrooms so bats let's find page 23 i went through all these pages and worked out where i was going to put stuff because it just makes it quicker and easier um fave supplies and embellishments and 24 unexpected well i don't think halloween is necessarily unexpected what's 25 Where's, where's 25? What's 25? Where's my prompt list? Why do I keep losing the damn thing? Right, here we go. Prompt list. Sit there. Don't move. Stay. 25. Abstract. Okay. Well, my fave supply, supply to use is paper. I am a paper addict. I am a collage paper addict. So, fave supply, collage, fave embellishment. Oh, just embellishment. Bats and mushrooms. So, we're going to need some mushroom stickers. Yes, I happen to have some here. So, there you go. That's those. And unexpected. I might move unexpected onto this page because I've got abstract, pattern and unexpected and I've got two completely blank pages. I think I'll do that. I think I'll move that. 25. 24. Is it 24? Yeah, 24. Unexpected. And 25 abstract and 26 pattern those three work well together they can do a double page spread and that means that this can be a double page spread so uh, let's get rid of that because that's going to confuse me if I keep seeing that there that's no longer on here so now we've left with face supply paper embellishment bats and mushrooms and we've got this stuff which I just pulled out uh, transparent. What number is transparent? Where's my list gone? Transparent is 27. Okay, so that little bit of transparency there can go in there. Because number 27 is transparent, so there's transparent. All ready. Right. Let's see what we've got, shall we? We've got two pages to play with. We've got about 15 minutes before my stomach starts rumbling and tell me the, telling me I need to shut up and start making some food. We've got a glue stick. Let's go. <sighs> Halloween tree. 
The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury is a favourite piece of mine. I read that book every year without fail before Halloween. It's just, it, it's what I do. I read it every year. I love it. It's like Christmas Carol. I have to watch Christmas Carol every Christmas and I have to read The Halloween Tree every Halloween. So, Halloween. I'm not liking oh. these... Not liking these straight edges we've got. Oh. Here. Will you shush? Woo rar. Oh. Woo rar. Hi. I swear I can tell the time. It's six o'clock every every week. Every time six o'clock. Boom. Here he comes barking at me again. Eighteen months moleskin. Yeah, I have an eighteen month month moleskin as well. But I'm not using it as an 18 month small skin. I'm using it as an ongoing rolling diary for witchy stuff. I haven't been using it lately, uh, but I have got a couple of things to put into it. So thanks for the reminder. Uh, I'm just getting a torn edge on this because I think it looks better with a torn edge instead of a, a cut edge. So we've got a Halloween tree. Got some creepy ghosts and goblins, weird stuff. We've got some creepy cats. I like the creepy cats. The creepy cats are cool. We've got some... Let's do that. And then we've got one of each. That's easier to... Oh, there's more skeletons on that one. Let's put it that way around. Okay. We've got some ghosties. We've got... That's classic background material if ever I've seen some. Uh, I don't know about this, but it's the right colours, so not sure. This is definitely on the top type stuff. So let's start there. Let's start with this in the background. Mm. Let's put that. Yeah, let's put that there. Can you believe it's six o'clock and I still don't have a light on? Is this awesome or what? Who knew? Windows have daylight. La 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 la, stick it on the background. Do 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 do. There's a card. There's one. Stick it down, stick it down. Done. Okay. Let's do kind of like this bit. Let's use that there on that corner. It's the same colours, therefore it will work for the background. What is up with my glue stick? Why is it just globbing instead of... Must be getting near the end. It's not spreading, it's just globbing. And sticky stick. Okay. I think this would kind of look cool on top. And I kind of like this as well. Maybe those two need to go together. So this is definitely background. And this is definitely background type stuff. And the Halloween tree kind of needs to go on top a bit. And so does most of that. Okay. Let's see. If I just throw that on there... No, I don't want to use all of it in one place. Let's do that. That's better. That'll do. That'll do, Donkey. That'll do. That was Yorkshire and it should be Scottish. That'll do, Donkey. That'll do. Yeah, 
yeah, we can't really get composition books here. They're um, expensive because we don't use composition books. It's not a... In America, it's a school staple. There isn't a child in America who doesn't have a composition book. But, yeah, we don't really use them. Moleskins, the extra large moleskins, the same size as composition books, Avelyn. You're going to the Peak District. Oh, that's just, that's only over there. Because I moved north from where I was, which was further away from you because you're down south. So if you're going Peak District, that's only up there. Awesome. Peak District's nice for dog walks too. I kind of like that there actually. Two on one page. Let's see. How about layering these up? So if I put that there and that there. Ooh, that purple's overpowering. Let's take a little bit of that and put it on that corner. So my process for collaging is basically find stuff that vaguely goes together, decide what that theme is. So in this case, it's obviously 100 days to Halloween. In the case of the other two, it's, oh, these are kind of all neutral and grey. I like that together. <laughs> um, the other one is, oh, it's all blue and witchy. So there's your theme. Um, and then it's a case of putting it all together. Okay, I need a straight edge on that. In such a way that it looks okay on the page. But there's not a lot of thought process goes into it. You can see I'm not really... I don't like that yellow. Maybe I'll like the yellow once I've got more of this. Oh yeah, okay. I do like the yellow. No! Oh, shush. take that dark bit off there yeah that I like there we go hush your face Mr Boo it's making a noise he certainly knows when it's time to stop work doesn't he you don't get to, to just sit around working in this place you know Okay, I like that. Uh, I kind of like these three little cats. Just kind of wandering across the page there. I might put those down here. Yep, let's just chuck those down there. That's cool. Like they're just wandering in off the street. Oh, did somebody mention Halloween? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the Halloween tree, I think I'm going to put the Halloween tree over here. So where do I need to put... Oh, I think I need to chop that off straight as well. It'll be easier to fit it to the page. So if I put that there... No, maybe it's better over there. Maybe it's better on that side. Nope, definitely over here. Let's leave a little bit of that yellow poking out. So, let's put a little bit of this, I like this bit of the yellow with the, you know, doobries. English, I have it. That on there like that. Obviously, we're going to need some washi tape to go with it. I've got just the thing right here. Oh, hang on. I've got my. I 
got these ones, which are very Halloween-y. See, that's perfect. There we go, that one. Matches the colour scheme, it's black and yellow. Just chuck a bit of that on there. Okay, Halloween tree. I need, oh, I've got all of these, haven't I? Oh, we're gonna have the witch flying past the tree, aren't we? She's gotta be there. I think this was a misprint. I think I printed it too big. I had it print, set to print a page scaling up and it went too big, so. That's why we've got weird stuff half and half on and half off the page. Should we put her down there with the black cats? Flying in. Just popping in for a visit, darling. Time for a brew. <laughs> Time for a brew, a wit witch's brew. <laughs> cats over because you know cats witches they go together says the witch with the dog two dogs anyway I'm just starting to lose light now it's just getting to the point now where I'm thinking oh I could do with putting a light in a minute it's not bad is it quarter past six I mean it'd be totally different in the winter but Oh, now I can put the Halloween tree a little bit further across, like she's flying out from behind the tree. Like that. I need to cover up this bit, though, because we've got gold washi tape in the middle there. Uh, that's kind of cool. in there. Now these pages are a bit of a mismatch. One page is smaller than the other so this one I'm going to line it up with that there. I can always infill this with a bit of washi tape so I'm not worried about it having a, having a gap or I could just leave it like that because it doesn't look that bad. Um, I like this creepy spider and I like that creepy gargoyle so let's have those two as well he's a little bit big to use with the witch so I'll use him separately on something else Miss Maddie, where are you dinner? That was a heavy sigh, goodness me. Actually, I think he should be with the tree. They should be with the tree. So, how much more do I need to cover up? Not that much. It's going to go there, I need a bit there, I need a bit there. Okay. Oh, a bit of cat. Let's put that bit of cat there. You won't see the cat but you'll see the purple and it'll cover up that shiny bit of washi tape there and 
because it's on the edge and that's kind of rounded, I'm going to need to put a bit of washi tape on that as well. So, what have we got? What have we got? Let's have a bit of writing. It doesn't matter that it's not writing that's relevant. I'm just going to stick it on there. Oh, didn't manage to actually tear it straight, but never mind. Yeah, stick it upside down, that'll do. I quite often do that if I've got writing that's not really relevant. I'll just stick it upside down on the page. It's just there to fill in a bit of space. It's not to be read. It's just background. So if you put it upside down, it pushes it back because people don't stop to read it if it's upside down. Okay, that's going to go there. So that needs to have... Let's use a little bit more of the same washi. I'm just sticking down this little bit of cat because he's going to keep popping up off there if I'm not careful. You're not going to see most of it, but it's not there to be seen. It's there to hold the cat in place. There we go. Now we can stick down this. her coming out from behind the tree. <laughs> they look like they're poking out from behind the tree. Woo, hello. <laughs> That's cute. I like that. Okay. How much of that is that bat going to cover up? Ooh, quite a lot of it. Not quite enough, but close. And the gargoyle. Let's have the gargoyle flying in from this side. What I like to do with collage, if I've got two pieces coming together, is to have another piece overlap them. So I've got one, two, three here, but that forms a line. So if that forms a line, it needs a piece of collage over it. It needs something else to get rid of the line. So I'll put him there. And now that line is no longer visually disturbing. And he looks like he's interacting with the tree. In fact, when the bat goes there, he'll look like he's screaming at the bat. Get off my tree! Yeah, he's a he's a miserable old gargoyle. Um, we've got a straight line going on here, and we've got we've got a couple of straight lines here, but that's deliberate. That's a straight line of washi tape and vertical lines. But then we've got a line here that I'm not so happy with. So get rid of that. You either add more lines or you take away lines. So how about? No, I don't want any more purple. There's, there's enough purple already. I want... What do I want? No, I like those. What I'm going to do with these is I'm going to cut a strip of these like that. Let's have them rising up from that corner, like they're coming up out of the ground. You know, like spooky ghosts do. Cover over that line. And then we can break up this side with these spooky ghosts going up off the top of the page there. Break 
up that line. And this ghost is not quite finished. He's got a bit of his tail missing. So we'll grab a Sharpie and then we'll draw the rest of the ghost. Like that. So he looks like he's coming down off the page. Yeah, it's not cute. Okay. Oh, I just put my pen in the bin. Hello, brain. We need some mushrooms. There's a mushroom. He's kind of yellowy. That will do. There's a grey mushroom. Uh, some more mushrooms here. They're very colourful. Don't want too colourful. Uh, those are a bit random. Uh, well, there's a nice big mushroom. That one will do. And that one seems to want to play. Hello. Oh, there's two of you. You'll do. Let's put some creepy mushrooms on. When in doubt, creepy mushrooms. I like that creepy mushroom just there. Let's put it there and trim that bit off as if it's leaning off the edge of the page like the cat is. Some creepy mushrooms around the bottom of the tree. <laughs> He's so funny. Let's put one there to disguise the edge of the tree a bit and let's put this one here where that little guy has something to poke around the side of. Oh that's so cute. That also gets rid of that line there and then it's looking a bit equidistant so let's put these two here, create a bit of off balance, layer those two up there, and let's put this one over this side. So we've got two together here. Oh, I don't want it to cover the cats. There we go. Um, no, I don't like it there. Let's put it there. Let's break up that edge. There we go, that's better. Who says mushrooms have to grow out of the ground? They can grow out of wherever they want to. They're mushrooms. They can do what they like. This is where the magic of these vellum stickers comes. If you get a little bit of card and do that with them, the white bits disappear and you're just left with the actual picture. you got to squish the air out a bit like you would with sellotape. And then you've just got mushrooms and no white bits. It's cool, isn't it? Right. Uh, I'm not liking this. This is a mess. This, this, this can't happen. This is a no. So how about we try and do something with the spider? No, that's going to be a no as well. I don't like that. What else have we got? Uh... Hmm. I can't put the bat there because he's too he's too thick. He's made of card. Um when in doubt stick in a bit of black, right? So let's kind of shape this a bit. Mm. Yeah, I probably should have stuck that down underneath there somehow. I, I didn't think really about how this was going to look. You know what? There you go, that's that fixed. Can't go wrong with a Sharpie. Uh, I don't want to put black behind the bat. Let's put the black. Let's put that bit of black there. Break up that little bit there. 
Oh, we could have had three marching cats going the other way. Never mind. I like the black. Let's put that there. Break that bit up. There we go. Uh, that line's all right. That, I'm, I'm okay with that line because it continues that one. So it kind of looks like they go together. Uh, if I could find a silver pen, I could like do a little bit of silver line down there to make it kind of look like it comes down. But who has time for that right now? Okay, this is going to get covered up anyway, so I might as well use this for behind that. Let's make this uneven. Ooh. Oh, that's more interesting, actually. Let's use that side. Cover over the two straight edges, even if that means putting it a little bit skewed. That's okay. There we go. Now we've got somewhere to put our bat that he will stand out. Look, he, look, he looks like he's got glowing yellow eyes. Look. Oh, that's so cool. Um, do just a little bit of yellow there. Let's just grab this bit. It doesn't matter what it is, it just isn't cheerful yellow flowers. There we go. Now this guy is not going to stick with just Pritt stick. So I'm going to stick a bit of Pritt stick on his wings. And then I'm going to use my glue pen to go around his outline because that will stick a little bit better because this is liquid glue it's a sakura quickie glue it looks exactly like the um uh, jelly rolls the sakura jelly rolls it's exactly like one of them but it's it's glue it's really handy for doing um I actually use it for gold leafing, if you want to do gold leaf details. Uh, but it's really handy for things like sticking down the edge of washi tape and stuff, where you don't want to necessarily use glue stick because you get it all over your hands. Whoops, don't do that. relaxing to watch crafting <laughs> I find it hilarious that people find my frenetic crafting relaxing I really do just throw it on the page and see what sticks I'm very much of the more is more philosophy less is not more more is more And pink is never going to be the new black, no matter how hard it tries. Okay. Mm, do I want some more ghosts? No. I don't think I do want any more ghosts, actually. I do feel like a couple of these guys would be quite funny. about if I take that bit there. I'm always poking onto that page. funny I like them and now I have a big banner but I don't use all of it this is one of the printables from Marianne Moss just go to Marianne Moss uh, I believe her 
blog is Dispatches from LA and put in labels free PDF and you'll find a whole load of labels like this in all different shapes and sizes. She made it many moons ago in a class uh, for a class I was in and she just released it as a free PDF as well. And they're really useful. Okay. It's a cool banner now. We could put that. No, I don't want to put it on that seam. That's going to be too thick. Let's put it across. Oh, could do with putting it across there, actually. But then it's going to be... My mushroom's going to be in the way. Can I lift him? He's washi tape, so technically I should be able to. Oops. Can I lift him without tearing him? That's the question. I can. So let's pop him there for a second. <laughs> if I put that there, yeah, it'll cover the washi tape, but I don't really care. He's three poke out from behind it as well. <laughs> That's another thing with collage. You have to get not too attached to anything you put down. It's, it's okay to be like, this is going to be a focal point and put it on top. But don't get all attached to this background stuff so much that you can't then go, oh, well, you know, I feel like I want to cover that up. If you want to cover it up, cover it up. There you go. That looks less chaotic now. I prefer that. That looks better. So there is our 100 days to Halloween thing. I've got a spare mushroom. Where do I want to put my spare mushroom? Uh, let's just put him over here, actually. Maybe I could put him here. And these ghosts can be peeking out from behind him. There we go, that's fun. So that's the basic collage. I can then go in and doodle and colour and outline. I've got black, one of those black Stabilo pencils. I could go in and go around this sky a bit. Make him stand out a bit. Maybe blend his wing in a bit by adding some black. There we go. Uh, can blend in these bits where there's straight lines just by adding a bit of line work here and there. A bit of colour, a bit of this, a bit of that. I don't think he's going to stay stuck. I might have to stick him down with a bit of sellotape. But that's okay, because sellotape is clear, it won't bother me. I would rather have him stuck to the page than worry about whether there's sellotape on the page or not. So this bit is, is um, empty. So let's just colour this in so it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. There we go. Uh, I'll have to do some shadow under here. This looks a bit odd here. Let's colour in that bit. It just looks weird that it's stuck there in the middle of nowhere. Let's colour in this bit here. This is a dry pencil, but you can wet it as well, which I might do for this. I found my I found my Arteza brush pen. Oh my god. 
when I moved my desk yesterday. There it was, underneath the desk. Here we go. Paint this bit in as well. Uh, maybe uh, do this bit as well, blend it in. Mm, I like the texture on that bit. I like the texture there. Yeah, that's better. That's stuck now. I feel like we need a little spider hanging down off that tree. Where's my sharpie gone? Let's have a little. Spider, there we go, fill in that space. It's cute. I feel like she needs to be purple. So let's grab a bit of purple. And a bit of that movie purpley, dark purpley colour. And do her dress in that kind of muddy, purpley I do not like brush pens that are so dry you can't actually use them with watercolours you shouldn't have to keep squeezing a brush pen if you have to sque keep squeezing your brush pen it's too dry Yes, this is the rare dotties ones, they're fantastic. Blue ones, nothing to write home about. Stick with the Pentel Aquash, but the red ones, they are very good. Okay. You know what? I think her moon could do with some of that yellow. Let's put some of that gold yellow. behind her here. I'm not colouring in exactly, I'm just adding colour. That's not how I roll. I'm not... I like detail but not when I'm doing this kind of stuff. If I wanted to be detailed I'd get a sketch and I'd do it properly and I'd draw it and paint it and you know detail detail. But that's not what I'm going for here. I just want to change the colour of the background. So as long as I go around her face like that, that'll be fine. There we go. That's better. That blends in a bit better now. There we go. Now what we need to do is fill in our label. One hundred days to Halloween. Boom, another journal prompt done for Junk Journal July. Where's my list? Uh, embellishment. Favourite supply. 
seasonal. It's kind of seasonal as well. Where's seasonal? What have I got for seasonal? Botanical. Right. Well, that's botanical already. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't really fit seasonal. What I was going to do for this one, because this one is botanical and it's a botanical page. So I was going to take a seasonal flower and like draw a, do a sunflower or something on it. On here. The squirrel whisperer. <laughs> I calm the squirrels. No, it's just my squirrels are so rampant again that your squirrels are just sat there going. <laughs> They're stunned by the craziness. There you go, there's a collage page done. Well, it's junk journal, but it's a collage page in a junk journal. But I work exactly the same on my other journal pages. It's not like I do anything different, except on my other journal pages, I might include like a photo or something. But I will go through exactly the same process with those. Because if you're not trying to collage anything in particular, it doesn't matter if you cover it up. Right? So... This is all gold and yellow and actually now I'm looking at this I'm thinking actually that's blue and yellow so it'll go with the page. Uh, this paper is a pain to tear as you can see so I do tend to cut it when I need it. Leo, that's bits that would go on top. That's gold, that's bits that would go on top. Uh, you know what, let's not cut that paper. Let's not make it difficult. Let's just glue that whole bit down. This is mm, origami paper, I think it's called. Is it origami paper? No, it's for. It's sub called something else. It's for... You know when they do origami but they use it for wrapping gifts? That's what it's for. It's, it's special paper, which is why it's all shiny. But it feels like tissue paper. Like napkin-like tissue paper. It's a very weird texture. Okay, let's slap down, lap down on that corner. There you go. And again, it's just a case of putting the bits in the background and then putting bits over the top so it looks like they're meant to be there and that's exactly what you intended them to look like all along. Let's put that in that corner there. The only difference is that because this is a journal page and it's also on a blank page, I'm not worried about, well, I'm not worried about anything. I don't really care. Um, but I'm not even considering, oh, I'm, I want to cover up the whole page. Like with the junk journal page, I wanted specifically to cover up the whole page. That's what the junk journal's about. For me, anyway, it was a junk page and I didn't want it. I wanted to collage something completely new. Whereas this... I don't really care if there's bits of blank paper because that's not the object of the game. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, where's that big blue one? Where's that that picture there? I like that picture. Let's put that one there to fill in that. So let's cut that even across here and on this edge and round the corner. See how I carefully rounded that corner there. Uh, in it about there, so let's just tear that off there. This is looking like a good Cancer New Moon going into Leo kind of spread, isn't it? 
Oh, and talking about new moons, there we go, there's some blue moons. Cancer moons. Uh, I like that bit of writing paper there. Let's chop that off straight and put it on that edge again so it comes down to cover over that straight edge there and disguise it a little bit. That gets rid of that edge. Now we've created another edge so we'll get rid of that one with that that's completely weird shaped that will do nicely it's neutral it looks like part of the background i actually am losing the light now i'm at the point where i need to put the light on so let's put the light on and see if it causes any problems for you guys it doesn't look and that's just my lamp that's just my uplighter gives me a little bit of color so I can see a little bit of light so I can see what's going on. But it doesn't affect the camera because we've still got daylight for you guys. Is that cool or what? Uh, my fingers are getting sticky now. They've got stuff getting caught on them. Yours don't always look like they were meant to be or there all along. You're not covering your edges then. It's like this. This doesn't look like it's meant to be there. Why? Because it's a straight edge. So how do we get rid of a straight edge? Uh, we draw attention to it or we disguise it. So let's draw attention to it. Now it looks like it's meant to be there. Now I don't like that corner. So what am I going to do with that corner? Oh, let's cover it up with something that's not a corner. What's not a corner? A circle. There we go. Let's put the red bit at the top so it looks like it's supposed to be there. There we go. How about... It's got a lot of black on it which we don't necessarily need so let's overlap the two circles. So they both look like they're meant to be there, right? Rotate it till we get rid of the black and that bit red. Now it looks like it was meant to be there. In fact, not only does it look like it was meant to be there, it looks like I planned it. You see how much planning is going into this, right? Uh, this is a big chunk. How about we break that up? Yeah, that's interesting. Let's do that. That's usually what I ask myself more than anything else. Is this interesting? Now, doing a whole straight line right the way up this page, is that interesting? No, not really. But if we tear it off there at a funny angle, well, that's interesting. And now we've got this bit that we can put here. And that makes that interesting. And a big, big piece here that needs breaking up. So how about if we use this bit, which is, it's hard to tell what it is really. Let's get rid of that white bit that's going to be distracting. It's actually part of a mountain piece, mountain. See, that was the mountain going up. And then these is trees, happy little trees. But if you put it upside down, it doesn't look, oh, the other side would have gone better. Never mind. Still a bee. We do it this way and oh let's do something different let's just stick it in the middle there randomly looks like it was supposed to be done like that uh, and then we've got our little witch please i don't like the straight edges i don't know why i cut things out i don't like straight edges uh that's a little too 
that's going to be a little bit too hard to cut so let's grab a, a ruler and just roughen up the edge a little bit see still a straight edge but it's going to be rough it's not going to be a cut edge I'm not that's what I don't like is cut edges I don't like scissor edges I don't know why I keep doing them I think it's because my scissors are out on the table that's why they're handy so I keep picking them up normally when I'm collaging I don't have a pair of scissors with me let's put that so the writing is straight but that's at an angle that looks interesting there you go there's a journal page boom done I don't like this corner that corner's got to go I lift it yeah my glue sticking skills are good but this isn't dried quite yet yeah that's better just enough to break up that rough up the paper a bit that's better Ooh, that's an interesting bit of paper. I like that interesting bit of colour. Let's put that in that corner. Yeah, that is literally what I say to myself. Is this interesting? Does that look interesting? Is this an interesting bit of paper? Does it match everything else? Excellent. Boom. Put it down somewhere. There's very little thought process goes into these collages because that's the fun of it. The faster you work and the less time you take over it, the better they come out, in my opinion. The more you futzy around with them and you're like, oh, but does that match? Does that go with this? Does that go there? Does that... Oh, there's how we get rid of that. Get rid of that distracting bit of red. Repeated patterns is a good one. Repeat, 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 circle, repeat, circle, repeat, circle, repeat, circle, repeat, circle. And since she's doing magic, let's put it so that the white light is coming off her shoulder. Like that. There you go. Boom. We've still got a straight line here, but I'm not bothered about that because it doesn't look like a straight line. And if I really wanted to disguise it, I could, if I could find my gold pen. I've got a gold ballpoint, but I don't know if that will work the same. But I could just come in here with a gold gel pen and just finish off this bit of these patterns in here it'll look better with a gold gel pen but you get the idea why don't I have gold gel pen anywhere hmm. that's odd that's not like me I've nearly always got a gold gel pen or a silver gel pen somewhere why don't I have them in here Gold gel pens. Well, I have to fix that. I've got my white and my glittery one. That's another thing you can do to break up lines. Let me show you with the white pen what I meant about doing this so you can actually see it. There you go. That straight line just disappeared. Uh, something else you can do to break up a straight line. That's a bit of a straight line there, isn't it? So don't even worry about getting straight marks or whatever and doing them evenly spaced and everything because that's what breaks it up. You just want to break it up visually.
I want this to stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to go on top of it with a faux stitch thing. There you go, that stands out more. Don't know why I even thought not completing the box would work for me because that's not going to work. Could even do that around the circles, make them stand out. I don't want to, but you could if you want to get doodly with it. You could go to town with a a gold pen and a white pen and a blue pen and just whoosh all over it with some doodly bits. Imagine all the little gold dots you could put in on these blue bits here all the all the blue outlines you could put on this yellow yeah Risha's like me she's allergic to lavender and she's got asthma so she doesn't like to do oils and things but you know you can substitute rosemary or chamomile for lavender we can substitute rosemary for anything, but chamomile does the same as lavender. You've got a massive headache out of nowhere. Are you dehydrated? Are you drinking enough water? That's the first thing I always ask myself when I get a headache. Have I drunk enough water? Have I drunk, had enough? Have I had food? And if the answer to any of the above is no, I put a quarter of a teaspoon of sugar, a tiny pinch of salt, and a big thing of water, and I drink it all day. And if you don't like the taste, add some lemon juice or something to it guaranteed if your headache is dehydration related it will disappear my doctor believe it or not actually recommends that instead of water if you're if you do it the first time and your um, headache doesn't immediately start to clear or after a couple of hours it's still there then you do this you repeat the process but instead of having water you have a can of diet coke not a full bottle bottles too much a full can it has to be diet something about the interaction of the aspartame and the sugar or uh, aspartame and salt doesn't matter if it's not caffeinated you can you can mix you can leave out the caffeine you can have a decaffeinated one uh, but it has to be a diet version because otherwise the sugar will make you go <laughs> But if you're dehydrated nine times out, if you've got a headache nine times out of ten, if you don't have migraine and you're not having a pressure headache or womanly headaches, it's because you're dehydrated. I get it a lot, even when I'm not, it's not particularly hot or, not, or I'm not sweating or whatever, because my body just uses a lot of water. I, I on an average normal day... I have a litre and a half bottle and I'll drink three or four of them. And that's just on a normal day. If it's hotter than that, I'll drink even more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It won't necessarily help with migraines. But if your migraine, ah, I was going to say, if your migraines are triggered by either not having enough water or not having enough food in your system, um, then, yeah, that could well. A decaf diet Coke, but it has to be Coke, not Pepsi, because Pepsi has, has a different sweetener in it. It's something about the combination of the aspartame and the salt. It sounds disgusting putting a pinch of salt in a Pepsi, but trust me, put a pinch of salt in the bottom of a glass, pour your Pepsi in and you won't even know there's, there's salt in it. But you only need like a tiny bit, like a, a generous pinch, 
you know, but not a quarter of a spoonful type thing. And it's something about the combination that it helps rehydrate you better than just water alone. Because if you're dehydrated, you're also losing salt and sugar. And if you haven't eaten, your, your blood sugar is low, which can also trigger a headache. It's fascinating stuff. Fascinating stuff. And I learned that from my doctor. And since I've started doing that, you'll notice in the last four, five years, I think I could count the number of migraines, proper migraines I've had on maybe one hand. And nearly all of them, that's what's got rid of them. And I used to have two or three migraines a month. Well, that's got my little pile of crap down a bit, hasn't it? Oh, it seems a shame to waste that cute little bit of silver of gold. Let's put that there. Match, match that bit. Balance the. Oh, excuse me. Hiccups. Match that. Balance that. There we go. Looks like it's supposed to be that. That'll do. Might even put that picture on it actually, since it's Leo season. Coming into Leo season. Fire ritual. Yeah, why not? Let's get rid of that purple bit that's going to clash with my blue. Although there's purple on the blue as well, but it's different. This is blue purple, this is pinky purple. If I put this next to it, it'll look pink. Gluey fingers. Gluey fingers. I don't generally take writing off either unless it's like this bit at the bottom says Spirit and Destiny, September 2016. It's the name of the magazine. But this bit in the corner says take part in a fire ritual. I don't tend to take that stuff out. I like that stuff. It's like messages from the universe. Maybe your fire ritual needs to be taking all your ex's photos out and burning them. Please be safe. Don't do it in a in crowded area. Always carry water with you. Let's pop that in there. Oops. Managed to tear that because my fingers are all gluey. There you go. How much sugar and salt? Um, you want about a little over a half a pint, like not half a pint, about a third of a half a pint of water or about a third of a cup pint or a third of a litre, sorry, litres, half a litre or a third of a litre of Diet Coke, like a can of Diet Coke, um, quarter of a spoonful of sugar and a generous pinch of salt. Like, you know, dip in and throw it in kind of thing. As opposed to, ooh, teeny tiny little sprinkle. Because you need the salt. And if you don't like the taste, throw in something really strong, like um, lemon juice, you know, like the stuff that you squeeze over pancakes. Or put it in, like, orange squash. Dilute orange squash or something like that. If you just neck it, you won't even notice notice that there's salt and sugar in it. And you probably need to drink it properly anyway. <sighs> Disclaimer, I am not a doctor. I'm simply passing on information from my doctor that has worked for me.
Right, that's my big pile of crap sorted out then, isn't it? Look at that. I love that guy. He's going to turn my journal. He's cute. I mean, it is 100 days to Halloween tomorrow, so, you know. Maybe he'll... Oh, the grey and brown page. There we go. I'll put him on there. He can sit on my grey and brown page. All right, that's it for today. I'm going to go and have some food. Wrap it up before the Scooby comes in and starts barking at me again. And do some more collaging. Finish off my other collage, I think. I'll do that grey one with the gargoyle. Play some Animal Crossing. Have some tea. And generally chill out. Is that supposed to be in there? I think it is because it doesn't fit in that pocket so it must be this one here we go so i'm not sure what i'm going to do next week um might do something similar just doing some more you know show you what i've done since last week and then show you where i'm up to because in theory less next week is the 29th so i should be almost finished with the junk journal We've got some more sketches to do, or well, I've got some more sketches to do for the um, banners. I should put that in there. See, I've got the frogs. I've got the newts. I can draw rats. I used to have rats as a kid, so I can draw rats. But they're kind of cute, and I kind of want to put them on the page, because why not? They're adorable. Um, so I should have some more to do to show you next week and if not we'll think of something else to do it's no biggie it's not like I'm short of ideas <laughs> and in the meantime Keep your eyes peeled for more vlogs. There will be more vlogs. And oh, there's dust in that. Give that a clean out. Didn't notice till I pulled that taut. There you go. That's it's probably leather dust. I don't think it's dust dust, it's leather dust from the you know, you just get it in the cracks of the leather. Yeah, it's from the the dye. August I will have a new kind of a project-ish uh, I guess you could call it a project yeah I guess you could call it a project I can't believe it's nearly August it went 2020 went January still January Oh my God, it's still January. Finally, halfway through January. January is never going to end. Oh, February. Hi, nice to meet you. Hello, February. Covid. Oh, now it's August. That's basically 2020 in a nutshell. I saw a funny meme. I like to share my funny memes with you. I love funny memes. I'm a, me I'm a meme girl. Memes were made for me. Dad jokes and memes. 13. I'm the, I'm the worst number in the world. I'm the most evil number ever. 666. No. You're, you're like child's play, you are. I'm the most evil number in the world. 666 number of the beast i'm the most evil number in the world 2020 hold my beer <laughs> and with that goodbye see you next week <laughs>